7777 Beach Boulevard in beautiful Buena Park, the town built by the Knott family. That's all we can pay for anyway. God bless you. <laughs> Accidental Woo! Tendencies, our band. They will be with us for three hours. A fabulous band in Orange County and beyond. Their tentacles reach throughout Southern California and soon to be, I believe, Central California for the college summer tour That's circuit. True. But right now, Matt, we have a lot to do here in beautiful Buena Park at the Rock and Brew. Absolutely. We got a wide open space outside. It's on Beach Boulevard just off the 91 freeway. We are going until 6 p.m. Still plenty of time for you to get your weekend started. There's a ton of room on the sand. We are broadcasting a rock show from the beach. We will have prizes to give away, including Dodger tickets against the Giants in the upcoming series uh, just after the All-Star break. We will have more free gifts to give away throughout the course of this program. P, we will have live guests, but we probably should set the tone. Even though we are live on location, it is the 2022 Chevy Summer Tour Stop number two, we should set the tone for this being a Friday. It is a Frogman Friday, ladies and gentlemen, on Frogman. the Petro and Money Show. Frogman. Frogman. On a Frogman Friday, the Petrosen Money Show enjoys Frogman. playing Frogman. the Frogman, Frogman theme. I am the Frogman. Nothing is softer Frogman. or more flexible than water. Frogman. Yet nothing can resist it. On a Frogman Friday, the Petrosen Money Show, though Frogman. landlocked here in Buena Park, Frogman. celebrates the Pacific Ocean and its contents. Trash, plastic, lobster traps, wildlife, sunken ships. We also celebrate the greatness of one Mike Nelson, played by the one and only Lloyd Bridges, one of the greatest television shows ever produced. See him. This time I couldn't take Pete Topside, not till the job was done. Instead I gave him some of my air and prayed that it would stall off the effects of oxygen poisoning for a few minutes at least. I don't know how Pete managed to keep going, but he did. He had every excuse in the world to quit. We have to do life, this. It's part of the process. He on the job. Muy hombre. A lot of men. Don McClain? Bill Plasky? I hope. What do you got, Ronnie? Anything? Crickets? 13-5? What are you, oh, nuts? Oh, lights. We still got to take that Florida, man. You know what that's like these days? You got the... Navy everywhere. You got frogmen. You got the EC2s with the satellite tracking. You got the f Bell 209 assault choppers up the ass. We're losing one out of every nine loads. That's no duck walk anymore. Let me tell you. Forget about money. What do you suggest that's reasonable? Dieter Rule, ladies and gentlemen, with C Lab. Big Dodgers Guardians game tonight. Oh, talk about a historic rivalry. <laughs> Doyer, 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 Doyer. What? Oh, no. Dodgers on deck at six o'clock. First pitch Doyer, at seven Doyer, ten. Doyer, Doyer. Dodgers versus Doyer, Guardians. Doyer, Dodgers. Doyer, Doyer. Doyers, Doyers. On deck, Morongo Casino, sponsored, will be live Doyers. from this very stage Doyers. at 6 o'clock. And we have a fabulous show here from beautiful Buena Park, brought to you by Chevrolet. Find new roads. Where's our, our setup, P? Where, where can someone win a Chevrolet? Where are we sending them? It's uh, Joe right over Wave there. Wave your hands. There's a, there uh, is Joe. Go sign up and win a damn truck, people. There's a blue umbrella. There's a lot of people underneath the canopy there. We have some space in the backyard beach area if you want to come up, especially when the band is playing during the commercials. Come on down to Buena Park, 777 Beach Boulevard in Buena Park. It looks like there's uh, some seating available, but not much. Also brought to you by Sweet James Accident Attorneys. If you're hurting an accident, call 800-500-5200. If you've been injured, you better call Sweet James and ignite your fire 
with C4 Energy. Yeah, C4 Energy drinks. You mentioned it. Body Armor, Chevrolet, Sweet James, Accident Attorneys. A big thank you to all of them. Without them, this is not possible. Our Chevy Summer Tour Stop number two in Buena Park. We always love having a rock theme at some point throughout the summer because what the hell is better than a freaking rock show for three hours? Nothing. While we broadcast and try to give away free prizes and thank all of you for coming out enjoying some delicious food, some nice cold beer, some mixed cocktails. Oh, the bartenders are exceptional here. We cannot encourage you to stay we here have the entire three hours. We have an outside bar. We have a set bar. bar. As if we were a wedding, we have a bar right there. And it's got top shelf liquor, just like Kevin Figger's wedding. So get on over there and have a drink at the bar, and let's enjoy the setting and each other and the fabulous band that we have now i don't know how we're getting is that a train that is a train is that the surf liner is that that is the uh yes i believe that would be the surf liner that's cruising from uh orange county oh, a little serendipity up to la down to san diego yeah a little serendipity a little bit of a clue as to where our next chevy summer tour stop will be in about a month but we are in the moment right now we'll tell you who we got coming on and all that in just a moment but kate's there are Giants Dodger tickets we have to give away at this event. Like, not everybody here gets tickets, though, right? Okay, nothing like that. Like, you didn't have to sign up to come and get tickets. How many tickets are we giving away? How many pairs of tickets are we? Ten pairs. Ten pair. All right, well, that's pretty good. That's, a, that's at least one table of people. So that's good, and we'll be doing that through how? Because we have the band playing. We got the band playing during the breaks. Raffle. All right, well, raffle, but we might have to just raffle it off on the air. I don't want to bite into the band's time. The band is why I showed up. That's all I'm saying. That's why I'm They got a full set list. Now, I am going to have to interview some people and do the dog and pony show that is great sports talk, but I am here. Really? Are we, are we doing a dog and pony show? Because no one, no one told me. I was not made aware that I was going to have to uh, perform and dress up and act like a complete idiot for three hours until I got here and someone handed me a costume and said, put this on now. I'm going to put the costume on the day. This has been a week-long thing between myself and our promotions man, Dave Weiss. I was, uh, let's just, you know, full disclosure, uh, it's been a hard transition in the Papadakis household between the school and the summer. My children have somehow gone haywire or something like Rosie the Robot. And I've been very angry. Well, summer vacation, Pete. You remember being a child. Last day of school. You freak out. You throw yeah. your books everywhere. You kick indoors. Yeah, and you know what we you did? You smoke cigarettes. Yeah, and we left our parents alone. <laughs> That's what we did. When school was out, we left our parents alone. We wandered the neighborhood. We loitered about. We went up to the local deli or liquor store, loaded up on terrible candy and pop rocks and things of that nature, and told it walking. And if their parents were home or not, we did the same things. And we were scared as hell of screwing up their house or something like that. Now, when it's summertime, the kids look at you and say, what are you going to do to entertain me? I say, well, what? how much did the Xbox cost, for God's sakes? That's for, for your entertainment. Walk somewhere. Ride your bicycle. Play cornhole. We have a pool, for God's sakes. But they just stare at you. Anyway, uh, so I've been a little bit upset this week, a little ornery. Uh, this week, also, I turned 45 this week. Not a, not a pleasant thing. No, 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 no. Ah, it's horns. No. Listen, I thought I'd be dead by 45. Celebrate it. Halfway to 90 is not a great feeling. And anyway, Dave Weiss, in the throes of my anger, Dave Weiss sent me a, a, a text of a picture of Matt as Brett Michaels and me as Slash with the most bulbousy bourbon nose on a Photoshop that I've ever seen in my life. Now, this is not something that happens in a vacuum. Years ago, on a poster for the show that's still in circulation, Dave Weiss removed one of my ears, flipped it over, and stuck it to the other side of my goddamn head, uh, making me look like Frankenstein and like I have some kind of UFC cauliflower ear for no good reason, thinking he's some kind of Photoshop expert or forensics person of note. Piss me off. And I just feel like if you put on the wig and the hat, I'm doing this for the opening segment, and then I'm, we're done. We're done. Well, then it's I sent a text segment. back. It's just one. I sent a text back, yeah, I'm not into it. Because I was pissed. I was, in, I was in a bad mood, and I was deflecting my anger. And then Weiss was like, you know, all butthurt Weiss. Well, I thought you'd like it. So then I felt all bad, like, hey, 
I'm sorry, I'll wear whatever you want, this and that, and fine. But then I show up here. It's always nervous before the show. You want to make sure people show up. We want to make sure the band sounds okay. Matt's been carrying stuff around like Jack Black's roadie for the last three hours. The roadie knows what the roadie knows. Looking all veiny and sinewy. The roadie knows he wears black clothes. From carrying around all the amps and, and swinging the wires around like he's working out with ropes. I mean, we, we're, and the second I get here, he shoves this scratchy, stupid wig in my face. And it's like, you know, can I have three minutes? Three, it's like when I walk in my house. My kids are like, nah, 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 nah. can I have three minutes? It's an hour and a half commute. Can I have three? I you five. <laughs> anyway, I will put on the wig. That's all he wants. He just wants a photo. He wants a video. I can't wear a hat and have the headset. All right. <laughs> we have a guest coming on in our very next segment. Uh, a dear friend of ours. For those of you that uh, have been listening all week, we've been promoting it. Uh, he comes on our show. We go on his show. He works about 100 miles to the south, but on the weekends, you can hear him on Fox Sports Radio. This is, by the way. Wait, I'm calling BS. If you really he want He doesn't him, have me on his show. He has you on his show. There's no we go on his show. Does he offer to have you on the show? Never once. <laughs> all right. I go on his show on occasion. You try to get that by while on I was occasion. putting on this wig. <laughs> You but, try to slip that one through the wickets. And, and this is, by the way, because our boss works very hard. He runs the entire Fox Sports Radio there he network. Is. And he's got he's, his white shirt on today. He's in meetings all day. He runs our Dodger broadcast. Got he's, a lot of work done on the trip down to Buena Park. Guys, I got, I'm at 60% budget for the year. I'm working double duty. I got to go close a gig out in Riverside. It's a, it's a used car lot. He's very busy. So... We're not sure how this is going to go over with him because many of you know the story we've told about the, the great falling out of one of our dear friends. Yeah, but it's all good. I mean, I mean, Don Martin, Fox Sports Radio, Steve Hartman, Fox Sports Radio on the weekend. It's been 10 years, Cates, and we don't know, we don't know if they've seen each other hey, in 10 years. It's been 10 years between Vic and Hartman, and Vic doesn't talk to Hartman. Yeah. Steve Hartman will be our guest in the very next segment, and it's the first our boss, Don Martin, is hearing we've about it. We've been promoting it, boss. You don't listen to the show? <laughs> so Steve will join us in the next segment. And we're going to talk all about what it's like to be Steve, the most virile man in Southern California. That's exactly right. Chew it and do it. He's going to do that. Oh, my is. God, there he is. Chew it and do it, Steve. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in the same polo with the same, <laughs> with the same tent shoulders, the same hair. <laughs> he comes out like a prop in a shooting gallery. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Hartman <laughs> will be with us this hour as he makes his way up to Los Angeles. And now here is a meeting. Oh, here is the meeting me laugh. between Don Martin and Steve Hartman on the sand. Oh, my gosh. This is there like, is, when, this is like when O.J. Simpson and Carson Palmer shook hands in 2002 right? in Miami. Don Two Martin. Heisman oh, winners. Oh, look at this. Everybody, oh, round of applause. Oh, reconciliation. God, we love God. it. Grab his face it. like Fredo, Don. Shake him around. Shake his face. Shake his face. We got Steve Hartman today. Uh, for you baseball Sit fans. Down, Steve, relax. For you baseball fans, we have real royalty. Orange County royalty. The king of Fullerton. Did his business. The first Division I championship in the history of Cal State Fullerton and back in 79. A longtime expo. A Dodger. An angel. And, of course, a coach sitting on the bench helping teams win games. One of the great baseball players to come out of Orange County in the history of freaking baseball, Tim Wallach is going to join Tim Wallach us. in the How house. How about that? Very exciting. And we will talk to sweet James Bergener, and we will have some other things going on throughout the show. But between this fabulous band, Accidental Tendencies, and, of course, the great Steve Hartman, we are set up to have a fa – and Tim Floyd, who's here, USC basketball coach, uh, we're set to have – that guy just looked kind of like Floyd to me. I was like, wait a minute, Tim Floyd's here? <laughs> no, no, no. We're, we're set to have an absolutely great show. But I got to say this, not since the, the Crips and the Bloods truce, for those of you that were here in the 90s, where you saw the blue and the red bandana tied together and held in, a, in solidarity uh, above people's heads, have I felt uh, that kind of kinship. And this and happens every time you bring that up. I start singing self-destruction. You say, no, 
That was New York. We're all in the same gang. We're all in the same gang. And we're there all we go. in the iHeartMedia gang on the iHeartRadio right. app. That's now, the truth. You That's can true. listen to the show on the iHeartRadio app with our band. You can. We're streaming on YouTube, uh, which is why I'm wearing the wig. Uh, and the hat. Yeah, the hat blew the off a the, couple it's, times. It's working right now, though. It's going to be hard for Slash w- <laughs> wiggling around and playing that guitar. Really trying to – like, it's like, you know, remember the uh, – in the baseball world, they call this Dominican style. Uh, that, remember Raul Mondesi? Case some, is not a fan. Well, it's true. Uh, the Dominican guys would try hard to place the hat ever so gently just on the top of their heads. So if you do something on the field, like catch a ball – or steal a base, your hat flies off. And it looks like you're really making a hell of a play. Simulating effort and speed and uh, suddenness and all those things. So you really got to put it up there uh, Dominican style. There you go. And uh, that way, you know, it and really... tilt tilted a little bit. Yeah, it looks like you're really doing the radio show in a demonstrative, fabulous way. So you can also watch the thing on YouTube, and that's on AM570 oh, yeah. LA Sports. Uh, YouTube.com slash AM570 LA Sports. Facebook has a feed as well. You can get the links, as you said, P, from AM570 LA Sports. They'll take you right there. Thousands of people watched last week when we were at the Elks. We would love for you to tune in. We have a camera on the band. So if you want to watch Accidental Tennessee, oh, we did. We figured we that did. out. We figured that out. So a camera's on the band if you want to watch Accidental Tennessee perform. The band Tennessee is the perform. biggest. I mean, no offense to Steve Hartman and the Wigs. No offense, Steve. But uh, the you look ba- great, though. To me, the band is the biggest attraction we got going here. They're going to play in all of our commercial breaks. They're going to play us out. So you listening, driving around town. They will be our out music between now and 6 p.m. They all right. put together a whole set list. So is that... Is that everything? We feel like we're good? I feel like we've set the table. I mean, Hartman is there giving me the Clint Eastwood wait, wait, stare. I got to get, get up. Get up to L.A. I want to work. Uh, right. I want to be on the radio right now. It's my big voice, and I want to use it right now. All right, so play us out. <laughs> we're going to get rolling. This is a little bit of a hiccup here. The what first hiccup? time. We're good. You know what we're doing here. Steve used to be in a great high school band. That's right. Dire Need. He was the bassist. Were you the bassist in Dire Need? We'll be right back with more great sports talk on AM570 LA Sports Live from Wayne Park at the Rocket Brews, the Petros and Buddy Show, Chevy Summer Tour. This is Petros and Money. Attorney Sweet James. Getting seriously injured in an accident can be life changing. At Sweet James Accident Attorneys, we help hundreds of clients get the medical care they need and recover millions of dollars each and every month. If you or someone you love has ever hurt in an accident, call us for a free consultation. You won't pay a dime until we win. Let Sweet James be by your side to turn your setback into your comeback.
Hey, Petros and Money fans, Fred Rogan here. We hope you're enjoying the PMS Summer Tour. But don't forget to listen to us, Rodney Pete and myself, weekdays starting at noon right here on AM570 LA Sports. Thank you for watching on YouTube and Facebook, the Petros and Money Chevy Summer Tour, and the virtual component as well. We're all winners, and we sure appreciate everybody being part of our summertime festivities. For those of you that watched, we salute you. And if you didn't, you never saw it. That's true. This is Petros and Money. is Petros and Money. This is Petros and Money.
Petro Sand Money live on location. It is the Rock and Brews in Buena Park. We're here until six o'clock. Got the band rolling. Accidental Tendencies doing a couple songs Fabulous. in the break. You can see it on YouTube. You can watch the broadcast if you're not going to make it down on youtubecom slash am 570 la sports or on Facebook. Same deal on our AM570 LA Sports page, the video. And it's a, it is a complicated shoot. I mean, Ricky's freaking out. Social Matt's freaking out. John Martin's over out. there switching. Tell him, take two, go. I take mean, red, take four, go. He's like Don Allmeyer over there. <laughs> I mean, it is incredible. Godelli is Ricky. I mean, it's, it is a uh, major production, so be sure to check it out. Plus, you can see the live music in the commercial breaks. We're going until 6. Sign up to win the 2022 Chevy Silverado. We're going to get a finalist from this location at the end of today. We already have our first finalist. Got him last week. Uh, at the Elks Club, the first stop of our Chevy summer tour. And, P, we're going until 6 o'clock. Tim Wallach's going to join us in the next hour. But we have got a dear friend on stage with us right now. His entrance was glorious and appropriate for a man of his stature. Do we have any music from Dire Need or maybe the Johnny Quest intro or something for the great Steve Hartman, ladies and gentlemen, our friend in the world of radio... For am I on? Oh, there I am. Yeah, Hello, there I everybody. Am. Yeah. Great crowd out here today. Look this. I'm not surprised for Pets or some money. You know, guys, it seems like just yesterday <laughs> that both of there you, for you, that be. was a very sort of a back slap there. Uh, it seems like just yesterday that I was getting the call from Don Martin that uh, we're going to audition a lot of guys to be the new loose cannon. Matt Money Smith came in, auditioned. I did not. Did get net. You did. You no, I didn't. Did not. Hit. I did not. Uh, Petros, I didn't get that call. Don didn't even offer it. Yeah, Petros uh, came in uh, as well to audition. Uh, but and then we realized that the magic was still to come when the two of you guys got together. Tell us about the audition. What did you tell Petros on his way out after I told the audition? Him the job is yours. And I went around. The I job told, is yours. I told my girlfriend's parents I was going to get this big job. <laughs> I went everywhere. I told everybody that. Things are going to turn around for me. Things are going to change. I can feel it. <laughs> and they did. They did indeed. What happened? But, no, uh, they did it. What happened, Steve? Well, what no, happened was later, there was a Bahamian guy who was also going to double up and do the Lakers game. Uh, a year so later, I got a yeah. call from Don Martin. It said, my man, uh, uh, we hired a, it's a no-brainer. We hired Michael Thompson. And uh, sorry about that. I said, well, I just figured you weren't going to hire me since no one called me in six months. And it was already announced. I believe, wasn't the statement that you made at one point, though, Steve DePetros? You're in the league. Yes, I You're remember when you were in the told, league. I, I absolutely, and he was. I mean, he was so impressive, but I knew ultimately he was going to be better off with someone else, and obviously that's No, that's out. not what you knew ultimately. I'm just saying that I for this still... audience that loves Petra some money. How many people here love a Petra some money? PMS Legends. i got to take this weight yes. off. I've All had right. enough of it. I was going to say I'm sitting here with Axel. I and know, and Slash. Slash and... The whole it's gig. supposed to be Brett Michaels and Slash. No, it's Axel. But I can still remember where I was. And all this is off the record. We haven't started the interview yet because we haven't done <laughs> the Chevy Reed and we don't have the Johnny Quest music or the AIS music right. yet. So when those start, we'll, we'll get started properly with Steve Hartman. Oh, there you go. Joining us now on the Chevy Silverado Celebrity you ready, Headset. Steve? You ready? Oh, yeah. Let's do it. Hey. Uh, S. Yeah, the one and only Steve a Hartman. Uh, S. <laughs> Sweet James a will sue the hell out of AIS. 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 You know, the thing about AIS <laughs> was, and we used to have Smitty You're from on the, the Tonight stage. Show. I was expecting we used to, you to take Well, I, I'm waiting for Smitty take from the, the old, baton. The former drummer of the Tonight Show band, he used to uh, come from We saw him at Kevin Figures' wedding. It was a beautiful he was reunion. The he was great there. great Marvin Smitty Smith, one of the greatest guys of all time. And he used to come across before they would tape the Tonight Show with a little makeshift little drum set just to play the action. AIS with us. Does it seem like just yesterday, guys? It sure does, Steve, because you look the same. You a look exactly fusion, the same, Steve. Uh, I don't change a lot. Steve looks exactly the same. You can catch him on Fox Sports Radio on the weekends and the mornings in San Diego. And, of course, TV every weekend, screaming into the camera, no need for the teleprompter <laughs> ever. Ever. I don't. I don't scream. I mean, this is a fallacy. For 30 years, people say I scream. Listen, Same with me. Listen I, to your voice, I project. Harman. I Listen project. To your voice. I, it's, you sound it's like loud. a champion. It's loud. It's loud. I, it's... Could, I could just still remember where I was <laughs> in my one-room apartment in San Pedro on, on Pacific in uh, Point Furman. How was life going then? You know, it was 
it was rough. I'd yeah. get home from my one-hour radio show with a person I hated named Mark Willard. I'd get home from that show, and I hated doing the show so much, I would buy a jug of Carlo Rossi wine, you know, the one with the pirate loop. Yeah. And, uh, you know, 10 a.m., I would get home, uh, and uh, I'd pour a glass out of the wine, and then I'd take, I'd take the jug to the head. Because you can't drink the whole thing. Well, I'd drink everything but the glass. Exactly, exactly right. And I, I just said, when's it going to turn around for me? And one day, the phone rang. <laughs> And it was Steve Hartman's booming voice. He said, you're going to get that job. <laughs> you're in the league. <laughs> How many people think that uh, P would have made a good loose cannon back great. in the day, right? I mean, come I tried on. To, well, I tried to be a loose cannon. I would just stand around and, and uh, until things got ugly, you know, then I, then I got flushed out. You are a loose cannon. You've always been a loose cannon. You I, know I, that. I love it, Steve. Yes. And I love how the brand keeps going. But it's got to be an exciting time in Don Diego de la Vega as the Dodgers taking on the Guardians tonight are not in the first place in the NL West. Well, it, it, I got a question today. We do a, a segment on our Friday show. What's it called? Called Ask Steve Anything. I don't get it. How does it work? Well, they just, they'll ask me <laughs> like personal like questions. Like a crazy call-in thing? No, they ask me personal questions. They want every little bit Is of Is that dirt. right? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it what? Gets, it, well, like, do you make love with your socks on? Is it questions like that? Threesomes, Blue, yes or no. Jeez, Blue Steve. socks. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's, there's, it, there's it. no well, you know, it's become. Bar. I mean, yeah. let's just, let's yeah. just, before we get any deeper into that, I right. think we should all acknowledge, even though this is a family show here, that Steve's uh, show has become increasingly coital over the years because of the Blue Chew sponsorship and the virility. Chew it and do it. That's yeah. exactly I mean, right, chew Steve. it and do Tell it. Tell us about the call-in before we... The what? The so call, the ask call Steve, this morning. You were getting to a story. Ask Steve anything. So what oh, happened? So anyway, uh, as a matter of fact, people were asking me <laughs> That's a Blue Chew on the this. Bridge. Just right. Thank you. Man. All the blood it goes to the middle. <laughs> It's all about the blood Your flow, heart starts guys. Deep, it's yeah. all it's about like, hey, the blood flow. Who's the lucky um, lady here at this Rock and Bruce? No, somebody, somebody asked me today on Ask Steve Anything, how hard is it for you to talk about the Padres when you've been a Dodgers fan your entire life? Fair question. My, how hard my is it? first Dodgers game, did anyone here other than me ever actually see Sandy Koufax pitch in person let's see i Am see I the one only hand. one i see i see an older see older hands. gentleman i see eh, a smattering uh, about five or six people I, I out saw there. but every one done. of those heads is gray and steve's is black <laughs> right? like that inkwell all right so uh i saw sandy koufax pitch his last season 1966 dodgers stadium beat ray washburn and the cardinals four to one it was like yesterday i can remember everything about it yeah here's what i'll say about the padres first of all the padres have been a surprise this year you lose your best player. You didn't answer the question. Those, what? How hard is it to talk about the Padres as a guy that it's saw Sandy Koufax It's not hard Kofax when you when you when you're talking about an underdog. I know here in L.A. we're not used that to underdogs. In first place. Well, everyone in L.A. is expected to win. This is L.A. right? This is a city of champions. So whether it's the Lakers, the Dodgers, you go right down the list. You expect L.A. teams to win. Okay. No L.A. teams ever considered an underdog. Uh, but in San Diego, shout out to the train. The little brother down to the south, very much an underdog, and so yeah, it's been sort of cool for the Padres to be playing good baseball. And yes, as of today, believe it or not, they're a half game ahead of the Dodgers. Break down the show, Steve. Uh, how long is the show? Three hours. It's on from six to nine a.m. All right, so three hours. How much of it is a your sex life? B Padres. C Los Angeles sports. If it's a pie. If it's a pie. Kind of give us give us a breakdown I, of what I you're talking about. I would say my personal life is probably a good third of the show. Yeah. yeah. At least a good third of the show. The Padres are probably a good third of the show. <laughs> and then the rest of it is just BS. Okay. I mean, so. You and, about, you and Orny? What yeah. about my Aztecs? Well, the Aztecs are I have a new stadium coming up. That's I would an like exciting invite. thing. Yeah, the Snapdragon down there. Well, let me ask you this. I'm just going to ask you. This is coming from a guy it was a Valley dude, L.A. guy, went to UCLA. How many people like going down to San Diego once in a while? Huh? Like, come on. Who doesn't? Let's go. You know, nobody in the back. Nobody in the back? No, they, they're all Ventura no, County types. There we go. We got a thumbs down over there. I mean, look, San Diego's a beautiful city. Sure is. Uh, Why do you have a, to sell it different. so hard? Then? Well, I don't have to sell it. I don't Should know. It I feels like you're it? kind of trying to sell it. Well, I'm trying to sell the interest in it. Every I, time we go down there, they tell us to get the hell out. Yeah, they don't like, like us. Like you, L.A. people. <laughs> We're well, nice to them. You know, they're not by nice the to way, us. By the way, this is something I found out when I first started working down there years ago. As an L.A. guy, San Diego is, who hates San Diego? Nobody. Nobody. It's like a weekend getaway. It's the perfect weekend getaway. 
so, Extra but, Sports 690, Lee's Cannons, there, let's go. When I got down there, it was like I, they have animosity toward L.A. Considerable. I'm like, amount. nobody hates San Diego and L.A. Nobody, Why? nobody think, Well, I, I tell you one thing that really st- stands out to me in San Diego. Yeah. It's that, you know, in the 80s, they let any Coke dealer build <laughs> any kind of house they wanted without an art board. So every house looks like it's like a little Scarface house or like a Miami Vice house and somebody's going to get shot out the window. And it's like, where's the art board? You know, this is a beautiful neighborhood. And these houses, it's ridiculous. Is there any kind of groundswell for, to stop this? No. Uh, I wish there no. was. I mean, I go down to La Jolla and I'm like, Where's Don Johnson? <laughs> Who built this house? How could they let this happen? They're the house very, next door cost $6 million. They're very backward in, in San Diego. They want to you know keep I mean? it a sleepy lagoon. Eighth largest city in America. They want to keep it a little sleepy lagoon. Now. Hey, uh, hey, Hartman. Yes. You like that Tatis guy, or is he kind of a weirdo? You know, uh, yeah, when, you don't, him, Steve. When, huh? when you have a chronic shoulder situation that you refuse to get surgery on, like that. and then he gets into a motorbike accident, Breaks his wrist, but doesn't tell anybody about it, and is going to miss half the. Se- wow, look at that! What do you think of that, Steve? You want to touch it? I didn't realize you had that. Hey. Matt has a bad shoulder. I'm just like Tatis. We're the same. Matt wow. and Tatis are exactly. Nobody the same. likes I mean, that Tatis guy. When you walk around that Charger locker room, do you show that off a little bit yeah, to they say, really "Yeah, get excited I belong." About it. I'm uh-huh. like, get out of here! You're not uh, allowed to be you here. You know what, Shows Fernando is—he's a kid, though. I mean, that's the th- guy was born in 1999. What? Let's always remember that. The guy was that born was in 1999. That was before I even got my uh, loose cannons tryout. <laughs> But uh, no, he's he's. But the problem is he's been hurt. He's missed forty percent of all the games he could have played for the Padres so far. But the good news for the Padres, even allowed him, they're playing well right now. How are the Dodgers do it? Well, uh, they won the last two. Yeah, they did. Yeah, you didn't beat the hey, Giants. I swept the Angels. I, I, okay, almost am I a one hitter? Here's here's something that has stayed with me my entire life. You don't like the Dodgers. LA you don't like the Dodgers That's not anymore. true. I love the it's Dodgers. It's just like you grew up it's, a USC fan. I tell you, and I then hate. You turned. You I hate. Turned. I hate the Giants. I hate the okay, Giants. Okay, there we go. We can get behind. Do we oh, hate look the at Giants? That. Look at that. Trying to throw red suck. meat to the crowd. Oh, by the way, you mentioned Mark Willard. He was on my show today. Douche. Talking about the Giants. We were uh, because you went, about third Because third you place. didn't hire him, I was stuck with that guy. Because you didn't hire me, I was stuck with that guy yeah, well, for another he, year. You know, exiled you, to the Bay Area. And you made a fool of me, Steve, when I was about to bring you on. And we're talking about it. I was like, you know, Steve has us on the show all the time. And he's, he's calling Dirty Pool. He's like, what do you mean? Steve never has me on. I, he has, he's on all the time. No, Why he's you talking about himself. On? What am I going to do? Do you know hey, how Steve, often I'm he available. Is, he came I... on just last week, right before he hit the surfboard. I've never even been asked to be I mean, on. We got him on. We had Why him on him at 6.05 on? in the morning. Well, first of all, I hear you because you're on the network. On Wednesday. W- yes. So I hear you leading into our show. So Petros Papadakis saturation, is that what you're saying? No, oh, because those saying? guys, LeVar Arrington comes on our show after the show. Oh, wow. so he, 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 get him so he on. gets on. Okay. Do you want to come on our show? Uh, Will no. you come on the no, show? No, I just look. I just said. I didn't well, know what I, your I, schedule I, you know, is. Matt was just, Matt, I was putting on the wig, and Matt tried to slide one through the croquet <laughs> wickets and was like. Well, he's the voice know, of the Matt Chargers. Matt was like, yeah, Steve loves us. He has us on the show all the time. He's like, no, he doesn't. I've never been on that show. I've never been on that show. I'd at least like the opportunity to turn it down. And that's mostly what well, I let, let me ask Don. Don, is it okay if uh, Pete comes on the show? Look Absolutely. at that. Look, Look at, at that. that. Oh, it's wide open. You know what? That door's wide way, open. Can I Look say that. hi to Dave Weiss over there? I, Look Dave at him. Weiss. He has an age today. Look at him. Look at Dave. It was like a marriage proposal. You it's asked for the, uh, the father's permission it. to take Petros' hand in well, radio broadcast know. marriage. I don't want to step out of my <laughs> zone Is it all right? If I put him on? Is it all right? right? We can all talk right. about stuff like we used to, Steve. Like we used to talk about. All right. About. I'm going to have you on Tuesday morning. You know, I could talk about San Diego State. I know about Tavai, <laughs> the, 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 the transfer from Hawaii. <laughs> I know the kid, Keenan Christian. Uh, what would you like to talk about? On your show? Yes. Now, I heard you on the national. What time do you get up for that? Five. I want to talk. What do I want to talk about? I want to talk about the art, the lack of art boards in San Diego. You can do that. And why you, anybody can build any house to look as stupid as they want to without some kind of local regulation. Why should I pay $3 million for a house that looks over the beach in La Jolla <laughs> and next door to me it looks right. like Pablo Escobar is over there? That is a perfect way to lead off our show. 
Let's talk. Let's do it. Where's the art board? Tuesday morning. Where's the accountability? That, I, I have your number, so I've got a standing you. appointment. You're going to have a. Uh, yeah, I know you have my number. Or you're going to have the an... same number for when you called me. It said <laughs> you're in the lead. Is it Steve and Rich? Is it Rich and Steve? It's, Is it... it's called the Hartman and Rich O Show. Hartman and Rich. By the way, because what? we decided to finally retire the loose cannon Why? name. Why? Well, first of all, Michael Thompson was upset. Like we brought Michael Why? on the show, and he goes. <laughs> So How you, got can to you be call upset yourself about the loose cannons? That's we like were the, the loose Filipino cannons. guy in Journey getting mad. Like, hey, what are you talking and then about? People are like, like, well, well actually, the original loose cannon exactly. was Jet Forty Damn and right. Philly it's... Billy before you, Michael, but not in Michael's world. Oh uh, no, no, it wasn't. Wow, that's no, cool. that's not cool at all. You no, know what? Uh, no. That would lead me to call it the loose cannons immediately. I yeah. would. I, I, I think it was. I thought it was retired. Once a loose cannon, always a loose cannon. I thought it was retired because the cannon's no longer loose. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I it's just looser you know, than ever. Never, now. never loose anymore. When you get to my age at this point, you yeah. really, you really sort of let it go. No, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. You just, you, I know you, know, you let it go. You really, you really chew it and do it. Right? Yeah. Chew it and do it. Are you going to stick just, around for another really, one? I'll stay yeah, you will. her all day. What else are you going to do? What else? Let's hear the you band. You like this band? We got to talk about your high school band. Phenomenal. They're better than Dire Need already. Yeah, they are. They are. Yeah, yeah, are. Especially the baseball. Player. That's Emmy. Yeah. Emmy back on the base. That's what I played, Emmy, the base. You're better than me, way better. Emmy, let me tell you something. I gotta look at this. Right? That's how you played the base? My God, what are you playing? 600 notes and. Well, no, I was like Ant Whistle. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> you ever play this song, Steve, in Dire Need? No? We'll be right back with more from the great Steve Hartman. I didn't even get into all my San Diego State transfers yet. Oh, we got I'm so ready. much to get to. Go. Rock and roll haiku fans are feeling you. Number one, thank you for watching the haikus on YouTube and Facebook and the Petro Simone Chevy Summer Tour in full effect. You want the haiku? You want some rock and roll? You got it. Coming up next. <laughs> yeah. Make way for the first ever Chevy Silverado CR2. With Multimatic shocks, rugged 33-inch tires, and front and rear electronic locking differentials. Dude, this is awesome, but we should get back to work. It's good? Perfect. If you're gonna work remote, work remote. Find new workspaces, find new roads. Chevrolet. Now! Enter to win the Chevy Silverado. You can do it online right here. Check it out. From a secret off-site location, possibly in the Far East, possibly in Whittier, this is Vic the Brick Jacobs on the Petros and Money Chevy Summer, Summer Tour. Tour. Oh yeah! Rock and roll haiku for you. Are you ready to rock? This is homage to one of the great rock bands of all time in space. They emanated born in Brooklyn, New York. They saw all the bands. They saw the Stones. They saw the Beatles. They saw the Who. And they said, we gotta fill a void. We gotta put some paint on and we're gonna do some pyrotechnics and just rock like it's our last show every night on stage. I'm talking kiss. I wanna rock and roll all night and take it to the streets. I wanna rock and roll all night and party every day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kiss. I'm feeling you. This is Body Armor Edge. All right, bring it on, man. Oh, what a move. Over to Dick and Smith. A little razzle-dazzle. Back to John. Oh, Dick and Smith. Thunder is done. Here's the pitch to Mookie Betts. He launches it deep. Oh, I get it, though, and I got to move. Put in the work, you can't stop me out the blues. All right, take it on, man. Find the opening. And touchdown. With 100 milligrams 
of caffeine and a thousand milligrams of electrolytes. It's more than a sports drink. It's Body Armor Edge. If you're listening to the show on the iHeartRadio app, there is now this sweet new feature. You hit that button, you can interact with us live in the moment during the stream. We love that you podcast and have made the iHeartRadio app the number one podcast platform in all the land. And we appreciate you procuring our podcast there. But moving forward, hit that button. Interact with us. This is Petros and Money. This is Petros and Money. Thank you to all of our sponsors that help us put the Chevy Summer Tour on. Obviously, Chevrolet, we're giving away a 2022 Silverado at the end of our Summer Tour. Be sure to sign up over there underneath the umbrella where Joe is. If you're listening online, you can sign up to be one of our online finalists by visiting AM570 LA Sports slash Chevy. But here on location, we will pull a winner, a finalist from anybody that is here. So you are entered into that exclusively so make sure you sign up because obviously the odds are pretty good a big thank you to body armor more than just a sports drink when you need to rehydrate and sweet james accident attorneys he'll join us in the next hour and c4 energy drinks at night and at night by igniting your fire the great steve hartman matt has been our uh, guest no. for the last 15 minutes it's been great he is still here talking yes. to us from 
San Diego now, so happy to be down in a beautiful place. And if you don't know that, he'll tell you. <laughs> it's incredible. I love it. Well, also, uh, the only thing I don't love is driving up every week from San Diego to L.A. It's a real less show. It is. It's, a re it's the five. It's a civic but failure. But there's plenty uh, of shortcuts, uh, right? Well, you learn them. The best shortcut is when I would do TV on KTLA and then leave at midnight and get back at 2 a.m. That's, yeah, that's the best shortcut. That's a shortcut. Yeah. That's a great shortcut. A, yeah, it, yeah. What about Not the surf liner at Union Station? Not radio show the next day. And then you take a rickshaw. Uh, yeah, exactly. Oh, my. Look at him. He's all Beat over Beat the that. game. Mm -hmm. Beat mm -hmm. the game, Steve. The great Steve Hartman, our guest. We're always happy to talk to him, always happy to go through By the, the way, you'll be able to hear Petros on my radio show on Tuesday. Good I'm luck. booking you right now. Look Good at luck. That. That's a tough booking. Look at that. What are they going to do on two pros and a cup of Joe? They're going to be like, he scooped us. <laughs> First of all. He's done everything. I have, I, I, those I have those a three are buddies of mine, so they'll, they'll give me a. I have a comrade, so I, I don't even have to go on the phone. You don't even have to come on. I will dial you in, <laughs> and I will sound just like this. We will give you as much time as you want. To me, the biggest highlight of this show, uh, other than seeing all the people, which is always, it's never not a thrill. Because when you do our job, and you know this, Steve, when you do the radio show every day, you can very much get caught up in your little room and your weird little marriage with your partner, and you don't think about just the scope of what you're doing and all the people that listen to the show, but to see all the people is really special. But the secondary thing for me is the band, the youth band. And when I think of, of a youth band, I think of a failed Youth Valley band called Dire Need. The Steve Hart. Now, you went to Taft. I was like, get whistled. That's I did. How I, I went to Taft with uh, one of my classmates at Taft, same year. In fact, I've known her since we were 10 years old. Her. Uh, Jane Weedlin of the Go Go's. Oh, yeah. Look at that. We got and, the beat. Uh, the the Go Go's were actually a punk band of sorts. Damn right they were. And they were a local Valley band. And I we actually saw them play early on. Uh, Belinda Carlisle, they had just joined the band. Never and, heard of her. And uh, But I knew Jane since we were in elementary school. She's a dear friend. And, and now she's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Isn't that incredible? So I always think and about they should what, be in the Rock and Roll Hall well, of Fame. Absolutely. They're the first all female band to write their own songs. By the uh, way, number one. One, like Steve Hartman has two things. Two things that he values above all else. Hello, Mr. Train. One, the Heisman Trophy vote. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Not even close. Did Here's you know I have at, a Heisman vote? We do know that, Steve, because yeah. you would give us one through eight yes. uh, throughout the entire college football season after yeah. the first week. Here it is. Here's what my ballot looks like. <laughs> one through eight. Here it is. There's and only three spots on the ballot. Guess, who, exactly guess right. who doesn't have a Heisman vote? I, I'm, and I'm working on that. By the way, you yeah. said, you've said that for 15 I know. Am I still I, on I the lead thought, for the loose cannon? No, no, no. But I did, I did find this out. I am next in line to take over to oversee the California vote for the that. Heisman Trust. Who's, and who's in front of you? With that responsibility. How close is he to death? Really he's, close. He's older than me. Okay. okay. So he's close to death. Right. I, I hope to be around for a while. I do have breaking news on that front. But This month, I, Petros Papadakis, college football analyst. Yes. For 20 plus years. Right. Have been chosen to vote for the prestigious Bolitnikoff Award. Oh, how about that? Because if there's one thing I know, it's wide receiver. Right. I thought maybe Doak Walker was I, where you I, were going. I know wide receivers. I know how to press that. <laughs> I know how to press that that guy covering you and, well, and then break off your route. Would a, you trade in your Bolitnikoff Award vote for a Heisman vote? I don't, I can't. I don't Why are you trying to get him to get kicked out of the Bolitnikoff <laughs> already? He just got the vote. I do you just do the lot award? I know you do the lot award. I, I am, I'm on the lot award. I've never actually voted for it. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Because Ronnie thing, Lott swore at me once, and I'm never going to go for it. The other thing Steve enjoys more than anything yes. is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, The ballot I, comes out. He's like, why are they? This a, person needs to be in there. Any Hall of Fame. Any Hall of Fame is right, Pete. You, know? you know, there's something about Hall of Fame that I don't know what it is. Canadian Hall of Fame. Tim Wallach's in there. You know that? Because you never talk about music. He ever. Is. Well, but That's I have, strong. but I, like Chuba I Hubbard. but I like the history of music. That's the whole thing. Are we looking you forward never to talk the new Elvis music. movie out? Are you, are you looking forward I hear to watching it? I heard it was pretty good. Did right? you watch the Beatles documentary? It was oh, yeah. incredible, oh, right? Incredible, incredible. Stuff. Well, I mean, that was shot for the Let It Be documentary. They just sort of threw that away. 
They didn't use any right. of that stuff. And now we got all the raw footage. And then you look at those guys. And you realize Ringo really didn't do anything. Paul would just be like, play like this. And Ringo would be like, whoo. Um, and Paul would be like, play it like this. So Whoa. a so former partner and I uh, of mine was a, a dear friend of Ringo, Richard. Richard, back in the day. And he always said this about Ringo. I know Ringo. someone who was a Ringo. dear friend of Richard's. Well, well Ringo, Ringo was always this. He, also people known say, by his what was it like? Dick. What was it like to be a Beatle? What was it like to be a Beatle? And he's like, I was a Beatle for seven years. I'm 80. So, I mean, that? when you look at that little sliver of my life where Seven I was years. either stoned or drunk most of that well, time. You, you, were the, you worked for the Daily Bruin for like two years, and you talk about it now. Uh, I, I talk about the, the Raiders. The Daily, how long did you work for the Raider Raiders? Days. How long did you work for the Four Raiders? Four and a half years. Look, and how old are you? 80. 60. <laughs> I will be 64 years old on Show the 4th of yeah. July. How's that? How about that? Yeah. yeah. Something better than an A? Yeah. A how about plus, that? I guess. No, is it? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of that one, Steve? Wow. What do you think? Of, you want to hear a better one? Right here. Here we go. Let's give you another one. Ready? This is even better. It's like pinching that grizzly. I made that up. What does that mean? All right. So I, we put the over what's under the, on what's total. What's the metaphor? What's that? Waking up a sleeping giant. Sleeping giant. Yeah. Well. <laughs> oh, jeez. You have that in your system? Of course we do. Oh, my. Of course we do, that Hartman. Song, that song Blackbird was about me. That's my, right. my favorite George moment, wrote that about My favorite me. moment with him was, you remember, you remember when Roland, what was his name, uh, the wrestler, the big wrestler that won the gold medal? and uh, Kurt, the guy Roland, that's dead now? Uh, what was his oh, name? Oh, Roland Gardner. Yeah, Roland yeah. Gardner. And there he came go. into our studio on Burbank. He actually came into the studio in Roland. So uh, we were talking about sports that could be eliminated from the Olympics. Okay. And somebody brought up wrestling. And then we went to commercial, and he goes, what was the name of that guy? Rulon, Rulon Gardner. He goes, I want to talk about it. So we come back. I said, so, Pat, you know, um, you know, wrestling's actually been a sport that's had some success for us. And he goes, absolutely. You remember when Roland Garros came in? <laughs> Roland Garros comes by, <laughs> and the guy was on the He was bigger than life. Roland Garros. He said Roland Garros five times before I could say uh, Roland Gardner. But anyway, uh, now, he was determined Pat to show. Here. How is Pat? I have not Pat talked to Pat in the last couple of years. Oh, uh, but God. he's he's I, alive. This is a bad yeah. idea. I know something it is. better than an A. <laughs> something better than an A. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> You've so said anyway, it all. That's I, a Hartman. Line. I have worked You've with a lot of people, all. but I mean, let's face it: the fusion was for the ages. What is it not back in the day, guys? Yeah, it was very special. You know time why? In our we, you know why we lost the fusion? Hmm. Right here. This soundbite. This is why we no longer have the fusion. Vic, will you stop doing that? Shaw? <laughs> because Pat <laughs> couldn't get along with Vic. And if you've been able to get along with Vic, you, know, you don't put remember him in that cage, Myers walking off the stage during one of our. Yeah, uh, but yeah. Pat, Pat was more destructive than Myers. <laughs> oh, there was that too. Myers yeah. said, "I believe uh, oh, no, he'd no, rather no. be dead." Than we be were the in future. Tampa at the Super Bowl, and we were just starting. It was our first yes. national week, and <laughs> you guys were back in LA, and I was down at the Super Bowl, and all of a sudden we start the fusion, and I'm like, "Time for the fusion." And I'm in the middle of Radio Row, but what do I care, right? Exactly right. And, Who cares? And, I, and you guys are like, what's going on, guys? And Myers literally takes his headset off, places it down nicely, and just walked away. <laughs> Boy, I, uh, <laughs> I just walked we, away. We've reconciled. Did you? Yeah, me and Chris yeah. have reconciled. That's good. Yeah, we called a Wyoming game. Oh, you did? Yeah. How was it? It was good. Oh, I always got along with Chris. Wow. I never had a problem with him hatchet. personally, but uh, wow. You and Myers are like a Personally. team now? Thick as thieves, Steve. We text. Yeah? They hang out every weekend. We text. Wow. They have martinis together. He lives up in the Oak Park area. Sure Should I give the address out? Unincorporated. <laughs> Chew it and do it, Steve. We guys, love you, Steve. You said I love it all. you guys. You know that. And, uh, Steve Pete, Hartman, ladies whoa, whoa, and gentlemen. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I want a commitment in front of all these people that you're going to be on my show Tuesday, Tuesday morning. morning. There just it like is. The, just like the store. Uh, miss you guys. Have a great day. We love you. Go Dodgers. There go you Dodgers. go, right there. Against the Guardians. Yes. Steve Hartman, ladies and gentlemen, a great blast. Thank you, guys. From our radio past, President Future, a great Southern California broadcaster and man about town. And we shall return with Tim Wallach, baseball royalty here in Orange County and beyond. As the Petros and Money Show Chevy Summer Tour continues.
This is Petros and Money. This is Petros and Money. What's up, everybody? Tim K. Hope you're enjoying stop number two of the Petros and Money Chevy Summer Tour. What a first hour. Steve Hartman was here. You guys love Steve Hartman. Based on the comments we're seeing, love Steve Hartman out there. Uh, coming up, Tim Wallach, former Dodger, former Angel, former Dodger coach, now retired. He's here. Going to talk some baseball. Get a lot of seam head talk here coming up. Don't forget to sign up for the Chevy Silverado. If you're not here in person, and we've got probably 300 people here easily, 350, and people are keep coming and coming and coming. The parking lot started to fill up. But if you're not here, sign up online, am570lasports.com slash Chevy or keyword Chevy. You'll see it right there. Fill in the information. It's that simple. You can sign up today, and if you don't qualify as the finalist, you can sign up again for the next Chevy Tour stop. You can do it every single time, not just today. You can do it every single time if you don't win. Again, AM570LASports.com, keyword Chevy, slash Chevy. You'll find it right there. Sign up. We appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. Hour two coming up of the PMS Chevy Summer Tour Stop number two here at Rock and Brews in Buena Park. We're here till six. Thanks, everybody. Hey, it's David Vasse. Hope you're enjoying stop number two on the Petros and Money Summer Tour presented by Chevy. Coming up in just a few minutes, you'll hear my conversation with Dodgers super reliever, Blake Trinan, and yes, he is coming back sooner than you expected. Dodgers baseball is on the air and on your phone. Stream all the games on the iHeartRadio app and get all our exclusive Dodger podcasts as well. Just listen to AM570 LA Sports every game all season long. It's been difficult for you. How have you found a way to just stick to your process to try to come back and help the team? I'm not a very vocal like leader kind of individual. Um, some might not even view me as a leader, but I try to just go about my business the right way. And um, anytime something like this happens where you 
get some setbacks due to an injury, you try to reevaluate how you go about your business and you might be doing something right for a few years and then something else comes in and you gotta start retweaking your your preparation, your your uh, preventative rehab stuff, your strengthening. So that was an eye opener and you, when, anytime you go through something you can view it as a negative or a positive and I'm trying to find the positives in it and the positives is I've found ways to help help myself stay healthy for uh, years to come. Um, I have some pretty lofty aspirations on how long I want to play and um, as long as God's willing to keep me here then I'll, I'll do it. Um, but it's not going to be because of a lack of effort on my part. Yeah. Um, the way I stay stay mentally there is I've, I've seen teammates go through uh, some mentally challenging situations when it comes to health and it's not fun when we're geared up to prepare ourselves every single day to compete and you sit there and the only thing you're Make way for the first ever Chevy Silverado CR2. With Multimatic shocks, rugged 33 inch tires and front and rear electronic locking differentials. Dude, this is awesome, but we should get back to work. It's good, perfect. If you're gonna work remote, work remote. Find new workspaces, find new roads. Chevrolet. Work hard in silence. Let your success be your noise. Going it out, Big Holy. Petros and Money AM 570 LA Sports, your home of the Dodgers. We got Dodgers Guardians tonight. That game will be at 7 o'clock. Dodgers on deck at 6 o'clock all show long. Make sure you get your raffle tickets. Come on down, see us. It's the second stop on the Petros and Money Chevy Summer Tour. We're giving away tickets to Dodgers Giants, that series, after the All-Star break. But we have Dodgers Guardians tonight. A huge thank you to Chevrolet. We're giving away a 2022 Chevy Silverado at the end of our summer tour. You could be our second finalist. Sign up here on site. Or if you cannot right make it Right over there out, with Joe. Right over there right with over Joe. There. He's waving his hands right now. There's not a long line. Someone that's here today will be a finalist to win a 2022 Chevy Silverado. Find new roads. Big thank you to Body Armor. More than a sports drink. Sweet James is going to join us at the back end of this hour. Sweet James Accident Attorneys. If you're hurt in an accident, call 800 500 5200 and C4 Energy Drinks. Ignite. Your fire, Pete. Wow. It is a rock show at the Rock and Brews right off the 91 in Buena Park. Thank you, everyone, for coming out. It is a packed house. It's a great thing to see the people here in Orange County. It's a beautiful place, and it is a strong crowd that we have, and we're very proud to be here that the band, has been absolutely a pleasure. Accidental Tendencies, they've already played uh, many songs, and uh, we have them on the stream, so you can see them on the stream. Just a fabulous band of very talented young people that we are blessed to have playing the show today, and, and maybe, maybe not their only engagement for the PMS Chevy Summer Tour with how fabulous they are. But, Matt, we have another guest coming rapid fire. Uh, unlike Steve Hartman, this man was not in a high school youth band, I don't believe. Uh, but he was a great performer on the baseball diamond and as a coach. Tim Wallach is our guest. Royalty here in beautiful Orange County. The Titan that Fullerton was named after. Five-time All-Star, three-time Gold Glove winner. Former Dodger, former Angel, former Dodger coach. Recently a bench coach for the Marlins with Don Mattingly. A lot of sweet orange gear with flamingos in his house. He lives in the OC, and his son catches for the Angels. The great Tim Wallach on the Chevy Silverado Celebrity Guest Headset. Yeah. What's cracking, Tim? How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for coming on. We my, appreciate my it. My pleasure. Now, uh, let's start with Fullerton, because uh, that's something that I didn't know very much about when I was a young guy. I played football at USC, and the baseball players at USC would, on Tuesday night, they'd be like, oh, you know, we got to strap up. We got Fullerton. Or we have, you know, all these Southern California teams that just created this great culture of baseball. Do we still have that here? And, and how did it get started? It was like a way of playing that was developed here, and, and the Titans were right on the cusp of that. Yeah, it, it, I think it started early on. Uh, well, I played in 78 and 79, and West Coast was, was where it was at for college baseball. Uh, it's UCLA still got it going pretty strong. Um, Fullerton has been down a couple years, but I think they're going to start moving back up. Uh, 
Uh, I like the coach that they brought in last year, Jason. Um, forgetting his last name, but Coach he, Jason. That's yeah, it. Jason's good. Jason's going to be good. He's going to turn that thing back around the way it should be. Unfortunately, uh, college baseball has moved east a little bit, uh, Midwest and east, and we need to get that back here because we dominated for for a lot of years. UCLA, USC, Cal State Fullerton. Pepperdine. Pepperdine. Uh, a lot of great programs out here. Yeah, UC Irvine. Yeah, UC Irvine. Really had it going. What, um, what can you tell us about that 79? It's the first Division I championship that Fullerton won. Uh, you were, you know, the Golden Spikes winner. You were the MVP of the, of the postseason all the way through. I mean, you really <laughs> tore it up. Uh, worked your way into a top 10 pick in the MLB draft that year. What is Omaha like? I mean, we see the production that it is now. That was in, old Rosenblatt, right? In 1979. Old Rosenblatt. What is it? Is it packed with people? Is it a huge event? What is that like? It's, it's gotten bigger and bigger for sure. Obviously, they got a new stadium. Uh, but the old stadium, Rosenblatt, was, uh, just had a lot of character to it. And it's, uh, they, had a, they would have the old houses ar- surrounding the ballpark there, and each house would host a team. And there were pretty good parties there for the teams. <laughs> and uh, yeah. anybody, anybody that was walking around the ballpark or walking around could come into these houses. They'd have food, uh, beverage, uh, pretty much anything you wanted as far as that kind of stuff goes. Do you uh, – I don't. I hate doing the trivia thing, but I think we, we love high school sports. Get Hartman love, back up here. I know. We <laughs> love college sports. And Fullerton, you said it, P. When you were, when you, were you know, playing football at SC, guys would be like, hey, man. Fullerton. I don't think oh, people... Oh, they talk about Kotze, man. Kotze exactly. was like so there we talking go. about Zeus. So there's Kotze. Uh, you, our man Tim Wallach has, and I'm, I'm using war, and I don't know how you feel about advanced statistics, but it's a better way to measure it because the hitting's different. How long you play is different than to measure batting average or total hits or runs. Uh, you have the highest career war out of Fullerton. It's a big number, too. It's 38 and a half, which is a monster number, by the way. Um, and it's not close. Do you know... The, can you name a few of the other guys that you would think might be close to you out of Fullerton that have uh, had good can, career war numbers? I can name them easy. Here uh, we go. Uh, Kotze. Yes, Kotze is in there. Kotze's a legend. 21.3 yeah, war, Mark Kotze. Your new manager of the the Los Angeles Angels, Phil Nevin. Phil Nevin's oh. in there, 15.9. Hard ass. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out on a limb and say Mike Rubel. Mike Rubel oh, is no, not. Oh, no, no. Nope. You're talking about. Professional baseball. Okay. Professional baseball. Kurt Suzuki. Kurt Suzuki is number five at 20.1 wow. more. Look at that. Good pull. One more. Who's okay. right behind you? There's someone that's right behind you. Wow, yeah. you typed that out. That's good research, oh, man. Oh, yeah. So he, uh, Plays ball here in town. Uh, I'm blank. Oh, Justin Turner. There that's we go. Easy. Justin yeah. Turner, 32 points. There's so many there, guys. There's a ton. There's so many Fullerton guys. I, like, I look at the Angels. You have a Fullerton manager. Uh, we have Suzuki playing there. Uh, when my son was up, he's a Titan. Um, caught a no-hitter this year, which was... How, what, were you there? Oh, of course. So, what's, so how, compare that to when you're in the middle of a game. Oh, uh, it's not even close. So what are you doing the whole time? Did he, and he I'm, get a three-run dog I'm sitting here game. like this and just freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... No, do you have to like, take a walk, or do you just sit there and stare no, at it? I do you force there, yourself? I sit there and stare, and I, my wife wants to ask me stuff. Other people want to ask me stuff, and I'm pretty zoned in on what's going on. So, What uh, inning did you start freaking out? Uh, as far as a no-hitter, I kind of I kind of zone in for the whole game regardless of what's going on. It's just it's a different thing watching your kid play than when I was I was playing. It was like... Big deal when I was playing. I didn't, it, nothing really phased what I was thinking about or how yeah, I Golden felt. Spice. But you watch your kid and it's like, oh, it, it's. <laughs> it freaks you out. <laughs> it's, cra- it's, there's nothing like it. So. Which he, so he caught the no hitter, which is huge. 12th in Angels history. Uh, yeah. Detmers throws it. But he hits a three-run homer. That was so, cool, too. Like, yeah. like, how big of a deal is the homer? Because, you know, they, they blew him out. It was 12 nothing. but right, I'll take the that three. freaking homer. Yeah, I mean, that was, was kind of in the fourth inning, so it opened things up, and it, you kind of, you know, that was awesome. Yeah. But uh, then you start thinking about the no-hitter, and that, that was even more awesome. I was like, I was in shock. I actually think, I think I said to my wife, I said, he just caught a no-hitter. 
Are you kidding me? <laughs> you know, it was like crazy. I, I, I couldn't believe it. The great Tim Wallach is our guest, and we're really happy to have him. We're talking baseball. Uh, the great Tim Cates, another Tim, uh, all CIF baseball in 1996. Let's go. Burroughs High Burroughs School. High School. CIF champs. Back when they were the Indians. Uh, but uh, David Vasse, is, is he a little, a little bit of a – he's got a – is he on Morongo Casino Dodgers? Because I heard him on Rogan and Rodney. Uh, you know Vasse. I mean, we're always – but what we do every day is kind of hard because we react to the game before, right? right? And baseball people, anybody that really knows baseball, you guys have the faraway stare, like when you're watching your son catch, you know? It, it, everybody has like a real long view. Anybody right. we ever bring on says, well, you know, if you uh, – where's the balance between freaking out in the moment of a game, like – that you're coaching in or watching your kid play and having the long view uh, looking forward months and years for some of these guys? Um, part of it, like us as coaches and players, I mean, you have to be able to separate every single at bat or play, and then it gets a little longer to game. Then it goes, you know, a lot of guys will look at a week at a time offensively because you're going to struggle this game regardless of what you do if you hit pitch field whatever it is, you're going to go through struggles this is a, a tough tough game so if you focus on every one of those you have to let that at bat go move on to the next one and as coaches we have to think more uh, long view and, you know, we don't worry about what's behind us. We ha you have to worry about what's ahead of you. That's, that's the only way you can move on. In you can't game. throw the phone like Hal McRae. That was pretty good. <laughs> that was good. The best was when the guy walked out bleeding. Like, ah! Hal's one of the best hitting coaches I ever had. I love him. He, that was the best. I'm not taking no S off of you guys. I'm not taking no <laughs> S off the players. <laughs> uh, I thought I was, Tim, I thought I was alone. Uh, I, you know, grew up as kind of a baseball fan of the 80s, and I loved the Expos. And I don't know if it was the uniforms if it was the fact that if you had a game, you know, because TV was not what it is today, so right. you would hear the announcements in the stadium, Olympique, in French, and that right. was cool when you were watching your team play the Expos on the road. Um, you get drafted by the Angels. You opt to go back. Obviously a great decision because you become a top ten pick. So you pass on the Angels, and now you're going to Montreal, where the majority of people speak French. It's Canada. Like, Walk us through that as a, a, a kid who's born and raised in Orange County, and now you are going to the farthest outpost that you could for your career. Well, not signing with the Angels was one of the toughest decisions I probably ever made. The problem with it was obviously bonuses and money and things were a lot different then. Uh, they were really tough trying to get – a nickel from them, mm. to be honest with you. So at the time, uh, obviously a lot of different people there now, but uh, I wanted to sign, um, but I was having a pretty good summer in Alaska. and uh, Alaska? Yeah, I was playing in Fairbanks, Alaska. What, Bat League? Yeah, no, that wasn't that. Oh! No, uh-uh. It was metal. And, and we like we're, that train. <laughs> <laughs> we, it was going pretty well, and I tried one last time. They come down to a deadline where you have to have to do it, and it was a tough decision. And then moving on forward from there with the Expos, I to be honest with you, I didn't know a whole lot about the Expos when I got drafted, but uh, a lot of people told me it's a good, it's a great place to go. They got a lot of young talent. It's a, it'll be a place where you can move up quickly. And I was lucky enough to get to the big leagues in a year and a half, so it turned out pretty well. And for people, uh, for people that don't know, you know, it was, baseball was a, a mother scratcher back then. I mean, you've got to win your division. There are yeah. two teams that play, and that's it. There's no wild card, so you're stuck behind the Cardinals. AstroTurf everywhere. That's no oh, duck walk. Oh, oh the AstroTurf there. That's a, oof, the Olympique. That was, uh, that was gnarly. That was not turf. That was cement. <laughs> that <laughs> was painted cement. But uh, was it 81 or 82? 80. The playoffs? The playoffs. 81. So 81. Uh, your first, you're a rookie, and you got to go into a game five and face 
some people believe the greatest left-hander in the history of baseball in Steve Carlton. Uh, and you end up drawing two walks. Uh, you got on base in both innings that you guys scored runs, and you win in Philadelphia to advance to the NLCS. That was pretty cool. That was, uh, that was amazing. And then, unfortunately, we got beat by Fernando Mania to go to the World Series. Yeah. And uh, that's, <laughs> that's memories I remember. That was an incredible game, too. But, yeah, Steve Carlton was at close to his best at the time and to get an opportunity to play in a, a playoff series then. And I didn't realize it at the time because I, we were good enough. We had gotten knocked out on the final weekend in 80, and we were close for a lot of years. And I kept thinking we're going to be there for every year. Right. I didn't get back to the playoffs till 95 with the Dodgers. So, Jeez. Uh, yeah, it was a long time. I'm glad you, uh, y- you mentioned that because, you know, 94 uh, obviously was a yeah. rough year. Um, your former team, the Expos, was the best team in baseball. I mean, they were a freaking powerhouse. Frank Thomas is going to win the Triple Crown. Like, that's going to happen. Right. Um, Tony Gwynn is hitting, what, 396 or yeah. something like that. And the Dodgers are in first place. And it's your chance to get back to the playoffs for yes. the first time in 13 years. So what, like, what is the conversation for someone like you who's had the – Five All-Stars, the Gold Gloves, the Silver Slug, and this is your chance to get maybe win the World Series. Like, what are you going through when the, the lockout and the strike is about to happen? You know what? And the thing about it, we, we were actually – I know the Expos had the best record, and they were probably playing the best, but we had just started to come. We were really playing well. We would moved into first place, and uh, we were just coming together where I, I really think we had a chance to, to beat the Expos to get to the World Series. Um, never in a million years thought that we wouldn't pick back up and start playing. And uh, that was probably the best team. We were, we were good in 95. We were good in 96. But I don't think we were nearly as good as we were in 94. Uh, I really think we had a chance to, to go a long ways in. So that was disappointing for me. I never thought that would happen. Yeah. No disappointment here. He showed up right on time. The great Tim Wallach, our guest, the very first Cal State Fullerton baseball superstar, long before Chapass Nevin, Mark Kotze, and, of course, Red Turn 2, uh, Justin Turner. Speaking of Nevin and uh, just Turner and L.A. baseball, uh, you know what the Dodgers are. I mean, you're from here. Uh, we talk about the health of baseball in places like Cincinnati and Pittsburgh, but in L.A., it feels like uh, we have pro baseball, and that's the biggest thing we have. Yeah, well, football wasn't bad last it year. It wasn't either. bad. It wasn't. <laughs> Made a run. I'm a college yeah. football guy. Yeah, I kind of like the NFL, but I like both. Um, yeah, baseball here is, is fun. I, I'm, you know, I, I won't be surprised if the Angels and the Dodgers end up in I, – I know the Dodgers are going to end up in the playoffs. Won't surprise me at all if the Angels end up in the playoffs here. They're coming, and I think they're going to be an, another team that's going to make L.A. area and uh, Southern California baseball is good, and it's getting better all the time. You look from north to south, they're all pretty good this year. It's pretty wild when you look at Mike Trout and Shohei Otani just individually mm-hmm. and compare them with other – I mean, is there is there anybody better individually right now than those two guys? Probably not. No, I, I think Shohei is just an anomaly, you know, what he does pitching-wise offensively. And Mike Trout's been the best player in baseball for 10 years now. I, uh, it's amazing to have two talents like that on one team, whereas you look at the Dodgers, and they just have – they've had a group of guys. They've had pitching for a long time, and, and it's a great example for the Angels. They haven't won with the best player in baseball, but now they're starting to get some young pitching that's moving in, and uh, Dodgers have done it right for a long time. Do you talk to Nevin? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know Phil. You going to go you know, help him out? Needs a little help out there? No, no? I'm done. I'm, yeah. t- I'm chasing grandkids around now. Yeah, I got, Wallach. I got six of them. I'm not going, I'm not going anywhere. Cut the cord. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can you stick around? Yeah. All sure. right. There we go. We'll do, uh, we'll do another one with Tim Wallach. We're live at Rockin' Brews in Buena Park. We'll be here until 6 p.m. Come on out, sign up to be that finalist to win 
the Chevy Silverado and uh, Dodger tickets. Tim's giving them away here on site. And make sure you check out YouTube.com slash AM570 LA Sports. The YouTube feed has uh, has got us. The Facebook feed has got us. This reminds you of those uh, house parties around Rosenblatt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back with more Tim Wallen next. We should get back to work. It's good. Perfect. If you're going to work remote, work remote. Find new workspaces. Find new roads. Chevrolet. is Petros and Money. Ryan here, executive chef at Dodger Stadium. And one thing I love is watching all the fans go to the taqueria to get Chef Morito's carne asada nacho helmet. And now I'm gonna show you how to take it from Dodger Stadium to your home. Hey Dodger fans, we're gonna make this fan favorite using Chef Morito's carne asada seasoning. Chef Morito is a proud seasoning partner of the Dodgers. Let's get started. Preferably you want to marinate the meat for 20 to 30 minutes to really enhance the flavors. I like to marinate mine overnight to just make it even that much better. So you always want to set your grill to medium heat. It helps you control your cooking and not overcook the meat. I love using Chef Merito's carne asada seasoning because the blend of garlic, paprika, and citrus give a rich and bold authentic flavor to the meat. So first we want to take the tortilla chip. You want to fill up your helmet. Then you want to take your beans. You could either use refried beans, pinto beans, any kind of beans you like. Here at Dodgers, we like to use refried beans. Then your favorite nacho cheese. And you can put as much nacho cheese as you like. We like a lot here at Dodger Stadium. Then we're gonna take our Chef Marito seasoned carne asada, put it right there on top. Pico de gallo, you wanna put your pickled jalapenos on and then finish it with the sour cream on top. To top it off, try pairing it with a spicy margarita. Chef Morito's salt, chile, and limon seasoning with its citrus spicy blend is great for any drink rim or fruit. I had a great time cooking with you all today. I hope you enjoy your Chef Morito's carne asada helmet at home. Go Dodgers! Dodgers baseball is on the air and on your phone. Stream all the games on the iHeartRadio app and get all our exclusive Dodger podcasts as well. Just listen to AM570 LA Sports every game, all season long. I'm accident attorney Sweet James. Getting seriously injured in an accident can be life-changing. At Sweet James Accident Attorneys, we help hundreds of clients get the medical care they need and recover millions of dollars each and every month. If you or someone you love has ever hurt in an accident, call us for a free consultation. You won't pay a dime until we win. Let Sweet James be by your side to turn your setback into your comeback. Make way for the first ever Chevy Silverado CR2. 
with Multimatic shocks, rugged 33-inch tires, and front and rear electronic locking differentials. Dude, this is awesome, but we should get back to work. This good? Perfect. If you're going to work remote, work remote. Find new workspaces. Find new roads. Chevrolet. Everybody, what's cracking and welcome back. The one and only Petros and Money Show back on the air live from beautiful Buena Park Beach Boulevard, the town that Walter Knott built. So happy to be here with a fabulous youth band that's better than most youths and adult bands. And of course, we had the great Steve Hartman in our first hour. Chew and it, we've been it. talking serious baseball. Serious effing baseball. Seam head baseball talk with Tim Wallach. And it has been fabulous, Matt. It has. Um, what do you got there? Is that a seltzer or a cider of some kind? No, it's a light beer. Is that a hard cider, it's Matt? The, it's, it's the Rock and Brews. Um, is that a hard light kombucha? Beer. No, this is just a, uh, a light beer. As you can tell, I'm hydrating is yeah. what I'm doing. Well, it's you know, make, Wallach's uh, really into the kombucha. I heard he loves the kombucha. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know if you – I'm sure you know this, but uh, you led the league in being hit by a pitch in 86. I didn't know that. Ten of them. You got hit by a pitch ten times in 86. Um, and obviously, you know, look, you're an all-star. You're a silver slugger. You're a heck of a player. Are you – are guys headhunting? Are you crowding the plate? Do you remember, like, for some reason, guys really coming after you th no, that they, year? No, they just pitched me in. They pitched me in all the time. I, I was actually a long ways off the plate because I dove in and liked the ball out over the plate, and they always pitched me in. So, Ever charge them out? No. Ever no. think about it? We'd have been charging Every two day. times a year. <laughs> I, why am I going to do that? I mean, yeah, it's a it's a different it's a real different game now because if you pitch in at all, guys get irritated. It, it's guys are throwing harder. I I will say that guys guys are throwing ninety five to a hundred all the time. But uh, we used to get knocked down. I just remember Keith Moreland on those eighty four Cubs. He always charged them out. I don't know if it's because he was a football player or what the <laughs> hell his problem was, but it seemed like he was always getting well, out there. He was a football player, so maybe he just that, – that was his first <laughs> first reaction. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll tell you a story. Uh, my rookie year, uh, I'm getting my second start of the year in the second game of a doubleheader against the Giants. There was an older pitcher named Tom Griffin. So I'm going to play third base. Larry Parrish was our third baseman. Before the game, he sits me down and he goes, hey, I just want to tell you this, okay? You, you need to know this. 
this guy, the, the first time he faces a hitter, he's going to throw one up under your chin. The very first pitch, I'm just telling you, be ready. And I'll be dinged. He, I went up there, and he fired one as hard as he could throw it. It was maybe 90 miles an Jeez. hour, but still. It was a different game. That's just was how, how it was. And you were just like, yep, there it is. Every time you reached out and got a base hit, you know, a good pitch and reached out and flicked it into uh, the outfield, next time up you were getting knocked <laughs> off the plate. It just That's just the way it was. And uh, right or wrong, that's how we played. Are there analytics for that? I mean, because like, you talk about a guy's a football player, that's why he rushed the mound. You know, uh, somebody's going to throw right at your <laughs> chin. I mean, there are these intangibles that, because the game is played by people that are flesh and bone. And you've been in the modern game a long time, and you can't – I mean, I know you can't say rub some dirt on it like the 70s kind of thing. <laughs> but where do you fall on, on the modern numbers? And obviously it can be quite confusing to normal baseball fans. Well, these guys – I want to say these players these days are, without a doubt, better athletes, stronger, faster. They throw harder. Uh, So there has to be a little bit of a different game now. Guys throwing 95 to 100, if they're trying to knock guys down because a guy hits a home run, which happened all the time before, uh, you're going to have too many people getting hurt and hurt badly. So, yeah, there has to be a different game as far as that goes. These guys are amazing athletes now they're just different we uh we have the the great fortune and you know you got to do it every day as a player and as a coach as well but you know dodger stadium is is glorious it is it is one of the finest stadium no matter the sport um it is, i don't know man that visiting clubhouse you know you heard what the mets said <laughs> oh about. yeah it is a uh cathedral uh kind of take us through the era of the 80s and cincinnati and pittsburgh and Montreal, I mean, you had, I think Philadelphia had terrible turf, if I remember right, as well. Like Everybody had everybody terrible Everybody had turf. terrible. Now, there's only, I think there, I don't know how many turf fields there are now, not very many. But there wasn't a good turf field. It, they were all. It was like cement, right, with it felt was on it? cement underneath and about as thin a turf as you could put on it. They were fast. When it rained, you know, we had no. Uh, We had a roof for a while in Montreal uh, after 86, I think it was. But before that, if it rained, it was uh, speedway. You know, somebody hits a line drive off that, skips it off that. It was was not fun. I I still have have pains in my back. I was going to say, what do you think it did to your career? <clears throat> well, it didn't do much to my career. You played a while. Yeah, I kept sure you played until you were almost 40. I played till I was 39, so uh, I was beat up and hurting when I was done. Yeah. Still have some things, but I'm doing good. I'm doing okay. Did you ever learn how to speak French? I mean, when you're there that long? Uh, a little bit. <laughs> I'm not going to even try right I thought now. you were going to say. Because I might say something that poo? I shouldn't. On poo? No, uh, I can count. I can. Yeah, I most can of our, uh, our French uh, speaking listeners would be really offended. I can. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but even people out here might know a few. Of them. Right. <laughs> you, you learn the, you, the important words. You know how. We, yeah, how that works. So when you're coaching in modern MLB, do they put like a big? I, I imagine it's like a giant stack of paper, Whoa. like with all kinds of analytics all the time. Do you just like act like you're looking at it? Do you burn it in the fireplace? Like. How do you handle like how do you handle all those numbers, man? Um, I did I did a lot of my own work. <laughs> I'll just say go. that. I'll just put it that way. Yeah. Nowadays, it's you know what's what a lot of the stuff that you want will be sent down. I when I was coaching, I kind of needed to see. I needed to see you know they have all these charts where we can look at and guys facing certain guys. So I'd go through all that myself and then. They give us the overall stuff, and it's even gotten farther than that. It, it's, it's. Uh, there's a lot of stuff. Your uh, your thoughts about how games are managed now? The shift, uh, the unwillingness to to play small ball. They don't want to sacrifice. Although it starts to, it, it's feel. It feels like maybe this year we're seeing more stolen bases. We're seeing more bunts, especially against the shift. Kind of. You know, where look, you coached a long time. You interviewed for, for manager jobs a, a right. number of times. Kind of your philosophy on the way we're playing baseball right now. Um, I, think it's, I think it's heading back 
to kind of a middle point of that where there's going to be some things. The balls are not – there's not as many home runs this year. Uh, right. At least there weren't early on, and that's partly – because of the ball, I guess, is from what I've heard. I don't know that. That's going to bring a lot of that stuff back. And you know what? You get in uh, like this extra inning thing when they put a guy on second base, if you're the home team and they don't score in the top of the inning, why wouldn't you, put, why wouldn't you move the guy on? And they don't. It's a different game. Uh, it's been home runs, walks, and strikeouts. And all I know is that when I struck out, when I was playing, I was not happy. Uh, regard, I just that was the last thing I wanted to do. And it's you, you, yeah, it's funny you mentioned that. So much I, unhappiness, you know. You right the turf and your back. <laughs> when I uh, oh, I love play. I didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> when uh, I was going to ask you, you know, how you decided to to call because you you had a solid season when you were thirty nine. But I looked, and the one thing that jumped out at me is your whole career. Your strikeout rate was like you had some single digit years. You had yeah. like you hovered around like 12, 13 percent. And when you were 39, it was 21 percent. And I was wondering if that upset you that much that you were like, I'm that's well, it. I, I want I didn't want to play that year. I was trying to retire <laughs> the year but before. You check. No, I was trying to retire. And and the Angels called me and said, hey, in December and said, do you want to come to camp? We need a third baseman. I said, well, I need surgery on my knee. Um all right, well, let's get it done. So I went and probably should have stayed home. And that was a different kind of knee surgery back then. Yeah. <laughs> That's when they cut you from your hip all the way down to your big toe for a knee surgery. <laughs> no, that was a scope. <laughs> <laughs> they still had scopes. <laughs> so. That was 96. Yeah, so but the scope was like a whole microscope. Thing. <laughs> the great Tim Wallach, ladies and gentlemen, Woo! a great person, a great baseball man, serious effing baseball conversation. Good luck to you and the young Wallach, and thank you so much, Tim. Thank you very much for My doing pleasure. it. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. It was like a this is your life, Tim Wallach. Right? Did you know what your war was? <laughs> it was no. high. I do now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back with more great sports talk on AM570 LA Sports. We got accidental tendencies. We got a whole other hour. A chicken effort and fun. We built a championship roster. This is Petros and Money. Ryan here, executive chef at Dodger Stadium. And one thing I love is watching all the fans go to the taqueria to get Chef Morito's carne asada nacho helmet. And now I'm going to show you how to take it from Dodger Stadium to your home. Hey Dodger fans, we're going to make this fan favorite using Chef Morito's carne asada seasoning. Chef Morito is a proud seasoning partner of the Dodgers. Let's get started. Preferably you want to marinate the meat for 20 to 30 minutes to really enhance the flavors. I like to marinate mine overnight to just make it even that much better. So you always want to set your grill to medium heat. It helps you control your cooking and not overcook the meat. I love using Chef Merito's carne asada seasoning because the blend of garlic, paprika, and citrus give a rich and bold, authentic flavor to the meat. So first we want to take the tortilla chip. You want to fill up your helmet. Then you want to take your beans. You could either use refried beans, pinto beans, any kind of beans you like. Here at Dodgers, we like to use refried beans. Then your favorite nacho cheese. And you can put as much nacho cheese as you like. We like a lot here at Dodger Stadium. Then we're gonna take our Chef Marito seasoned carne asada, put it right there on top. Pico de gallo, you wanna put your pickled jalapenos on and then finish it with the sour cream on top. To top it off, try pairing it with a spicy margarita. Chef Marito's salt, chile, and limon seasoning with its citrus spicy blend is great for any drink rim or fruit. 
had a great time cooking with you all today. I hope you enjoy your Chef Marito's carne asada helmet at home. Go Dodgers! Dodgers baseball is on the air and on your phone. Stream all the games on the iHeartRadio app and get all our exclusive Dodger podcasts as well. Just listen to AM570 LA Sports every game all season long. I'm accident attorney Sweet James. Getting seriously injured in an accident can be life-changing. At Sweet James Accident Attorneys, we help hundreds of clients get the medical care they need and recover millions of dollars each and every month. If you or someone you love has ever hurt in an accident, call us for a free consultation. You won't pay a dime until we win. Let Sweet James be by your side to turn your setback into your comeback. Make way for the first ever Chevy Silverado CR2. With Multimatic shocks, rugged 33-inch tires, and front and rear electronic locking differentials. Dude, this is awesome, but we should get back to work. It's good? Perfect. If you're gonna work remote, work remote. Find new workspaces, find new roads. Chevrolet. This is Petros and Money.
This is Petros and Money. Send money, Chevy Summer Tour stop, our second one this year, Rockin' Brews in beautiful Buena Park, 7777 Beach Boulevard. There's plenty of room inside. Outside here, it's a little crowded, but everybody's having a great time. Register with Joe up there under the umbrella to become a finalist to win the brand new 2022 Chevy Silverado. We are giving away a truck at the end of the summer. The PMS Chevy Summer Tour is brought to you by Chevrolet, Body Armor, Sweet James Accident Attorneys, and C4 Energy Drinks. We already talked to Steve Hartman. Steve Hartman, very nostalgic conversation for us great sports talk types. Tim great Wallach. sports talk. This is your life, Tim Wallach. Was fabulous. I love the uh, summer tour stop. This is your life. Jim Lindbergh, this is your this life. This is your life. <laughs> Adam Kennedy, this, this is, is your, your life. life. Sean Green, this exactly. is your life. Christian Okoye, this, this is your life. <laughs> the great Don Martin, still here. Still here, having a good time. Engaged in an intense conversation with Steve Hartman and Bob Schmidt, the promo guy. Hand in hand, like the black and white hand and the float at the end of Animal House. Oh, good call. Just love to see it here. And all the great people in Buena Park. But still, Matt, beyond Steve Hartman and Don Martin's fake-ass truce, beyond, <laughs> beyond... I mean, I saw him at the Super Bowl 10 years ago. It's not that big of a deal. Be <laughs> 10 years ago. That's what he said. I saw I him. I don't we, know why you guys are making a big deal about him. I saw him 10 years ago. Tampa Bay. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, had a, we had a great conversation with Tim Wallach. But to me, that's not the highlight. Not even the hats that the PMS uh, union guy brought. The highlight is the great band, Matt, that you spent the whole day setting up. And because you spent the day setting up the band, your muscles are sinewy oh, yeah. and strong and veiny. It's, uh, it's been fun. It's been great during the commercial breaks pleasure. to have live music. I think all of us that like going to concerts and uh, had to deal with no live shows through Suck. the pandemic. Hell, we had to do virtual Chevy Summer Tours, and you all know, I think, based on how we walk around and engage and what our conversations are like, how much we love being back out here to hang out with the people, to embrace the people, to have live events, to party together. That's right. To drink beers together, to listen to music. So having live music back is special, and for us to have it. And look, the history of the Petros and Money Chevy Summer Tour has been chock full of music, whether we're interviewing artists or the exceptional widely respected reggae band, the Expanders, who have played multiple times. That's right. Now, we've had some other misses with white guy reggae bands. We have. But that was a hit. That was a direct hit on the German factory. We had a steel drum band that could not decide what the name of their band was and had a wild argument just I like to the left band. of the stage. We love them. They're like, going to be back this year. They'll be back, but unless Accidental Tendencies is... Uh, is available? Is available. So we decided, as we have an open segment here, uh, for those that couldn't make it out, uh, and Bird, I don't know if you're, you're taking a nap or what's happening. Bird's but, doing okay. But, yeah, he's, he's been great. If we, could, uh, if we could bring the band up a little bit, maybe we share with the people that haven't had an opportunity to watch on YouTube or on Facebook. Bert ordered a sodium bicarbonate about an hour ago, and he's still waiting for it. <laughs> Maybe we give a little... Uh, Let's well, introduce the band, okay. Matt. I well, mean, her, the you, band it, is here. It's weird for me, because you know what I mean? I'm, I, you, well, you're I the think, freaking... Ah, you're the guy you that set the him lead. up. You I don't, take you know, the lead. I mean, it's I a fabulous... You take the lead on this. It's a fabulous youth band. I saw the band for the first time in Torrance on Greek Easter. And yes, I did drink some of my brother-in-law's special moonshine that day but the band is just as good as they were now that i'm not under the influence of that all-encompassing elixir moonshine. my brother-in-law simon's uh, moonshine and uh they they were going to do last week's show at the elks but there was a vacation emmy was out of town emmy, emmy the bassist was on vacation and uh where'd you go emmy hawaii hawaii oh, can we kaanapali Seattle, much like Hawaii, especially this time of year. No, no, the mics aren't on. All right, so 
Uh, we do want to introduce the band, yeah, though, Matt. Do. So why don't we introduce Bird, the are they potted up? Or can we get them on? Yeah, yeah. put them on. All right, let's go. Talk to the kids, Matt. Oh. Yeah, yeah there, there that's Preston Smith, Hi. the lead singer, Matt's daughter, his youngest, born the first year that Matt and I started doing the Petros and Money Show. That's, that's the truth. Exactly uh, right. So Matt could go to what was one of the worst birthdays I've ever had in my life. Uh, my surprise birthday, <laughs> my 30th surprise birthday party, Matt lied and said Carrie, his wife, was in labor. And uh, so he could leave early and be there for my surprise be party. Be part of the surprise. Which is a horrible disappointment, the whole party. Your birthday the 16th, Preston the 22nd, 21st. Yeah. Be good if I knew she her was, birthday. She We're was born. for Hawaii on the 22nd. She was born 21st. Five, five days later. Um, Emmy Beck on base. Yeah. Preston and Emmy met at Orange County School of the Arts uh, in seventh grade. Uh, Zach, dias. Zach Peraza is our lead guitarist. Big round of applause for Zach. Zach goes to APA at Huntington Beach High School. Appalachian State. He'll be a junior. At, All uh, the way from Appalachian State. He is an HB Oiler. Uh, at APA. the APA program oh. and the MMET program. I thought he was coming from Boone, oh, North yeah, Carolina. And then, uh, and then on drums, our man Jax Cunningham. I love Jax. Jax just, Jax just graduated eighth grade. And, no. Uh, yes. Jax, who was beating the hell out of those drums as an eighth grader going into his freshman year. You know how you know he means business on the drums? Biker shorts. Oh yeah, yeah. You don't. Come, you can't. You can't. <laughs> you you can't wear that Italian together. bikini underwear when you're drumming. <laughs> Not unless you want to be chafed to the bejesus when the show's <laughs> over. Three hours. Come on. So uh, what a band. So my I, favorite band. I think they're going to play a little something here. Are we going to play a song? I think so. Why don't we? Why don't we play a song for you know as long as we can, and then maybe Ronnie before the song is almost over, go to break, and then we'll be back, and we pretty much have uh, open. Hour, so we'll have fun. We'll chicken f. We'll talk about the great, uh, the great food here at Rock and Brews and the history of Buena Park, which is important. All right. So what do we got here, Preston? Uh, so this is a song that actually I wrote. Last, oh, uh, an original. An original. Yeah, yeah Bert. On the radio for the first time ever. Yeah. Okay. The first time ever, live. Um, this is a song that I wrote last year. Uh, yeah, last year. Um, it's about an experience that I had. Uh, if I can give a piece of advice to anybody that's watching right now, don't date your neighbors. Let's run it. Don't this date is, your neighbors. All right. This is Boy Next Door. Wow. Yeah, we had talked. And we talked for a long time. I never would think. I only think that you lie You're still in my thoughts You show up from time to time Deep in my camera roll There's memories of us Laughing at midnight Three months later This girl's crying in a car Wishing she never met the boy Who just broke her heart but the very next day He's already over I just can't comprehend If they're all the things I'd want to hold your hand If I go through it again Why would I do it all again? To the boy next door who stole my heart Took it away and then ripped it apart It took away my affection Why do I still want to accept it? Why do I tell myself that I hate you? Making up things is just start to understand This is Petros and Money. Ryan here, executive chef at Dodger Stadium. And one thing I love is watching all the fans go to the taqueria to get Chef Morito's carne asada nacho helmet. And now I'm going to show you how to take it from Dodger Stadium to your home. Hey Dodger fans, we're going to make this fan favorite using Chef Morito's carne asada seasoning. Chef Morito is a proud seasoning partner of the Dodgers. Let's get started. 
Preferably you want to marinate the meat for 20 to 30 minutes to really enhance the flavors. I like to marinate mine overnight to just make it even that much better. So you always want to set your grill to medium heat. It helps you control your cooking and not overcook the meat. I love using Chef Merito's carne asada seasoning because the blend of garlic, paprika, and citrus give a rich and bold, authentic flavor to the meat. So first we want to take the tortilla chip. You want to fill up your helmet. Then you want to take your beans. You could either use refried beans, pinto beans, any kind of beans you like. Here at Dodgers, we like to use refried beans. Then your favorite nacho cheese. And you can put as much nacho cheese as you like. We like a lot here at Dodger Stadium. Then we're gonna take our Chef Marito seasoned carne asada, put it right there on top. Pico de gallo, you wanna put your pickled jalapenos on and then finish it with the sour cream on top. To top it off, try pairing it with a spicy margarita. Chef Marito's salt, chile, and limon seasoning with its citrus spicy blend is great for any drink rim or fruit. I had a great time cooking with you all today. I hope you enjoy your Chef Marito's carne asada helmet at home. Go Dodgers! Dodgers baseball is on the air and on your phone. Stream all the games on the iHeartRadio app and get all our exclusive Dodger podcasts as well. Just listen to AM570 LA Sports every game all season long. I'm Max. This is Petros and Money. Attorney Sweet James. Getting seriously injured in an accident can be life changing. At Sweet James Accident Attorneys, we help hundreds of clients get the medical care they need and recover millions of dollars each and every month. If you or someone you love has ever hurt in an accident, call us for a free consultation. You won't pay a dime until we win. Let Sweet James be by your side to turn your setback into your comeback. Hey, Petros and Money fans, Fred Rogan here. We hope you're enjoying the PMS Summer Tour. But don't forget to listen to us, Rodney Pete and myself, weekdays starting at noon right here on AM570 LA Sports. Thank you for watching on YouTube and Facebook, the Petros and Money Chevy Summer Tour, and the virtual component as well. We're all winners, and we sure appreciate everybody being part of our summertime festivities. For those of you that watched, we salute you. And if you didn't, you never saw it. That's true. This is Petros and Money.
This is Petros and Money. <laughs> Buenos dias. Accidental tendencies carrying the band for the last, carrying the show, I should say, for the last two and a half hours. We've had Tim Wallach on. We've had a fabulous conversation with Steve Hartman. And Matt, the party continues. It continues. Uh, Lies! Lies! There we go. It continues on Did stage. Did I screw up? No, we're fine. Oh, go ahead. Uh, we are here for another hour, and the party continues on stage, B, because we have got a collection of booze of food, and we have a very special guest. We do, Matt. It is it's a... the final hour fun fact oh. is facts about our location. It's fun in effect, it's the hour three. It is not the first time we've fun been at Rock and Brews. In fact, during the stream on YouTube, we just showed a bunch of clips from about three or four years ago, right, Weiss, with Vic the Brick Jacobs at Rock and Brews, and we miss Vic very much, and if Vic was here, Man, would he be excited oh, be to see Jenna. Out. Oh, God! He'd be freaking out. But we're out. happy to see our senior VP and director of training at Rock and Brews. If you want to get trained, then Jenna is here to train She's you. She's freaking I'm out. She's going to train you so she hard. She is freaking and out. And she is out. very worried. Like, you thought that youth band was freaked out when the show started, man, and they had to play clandestino. That's nothing compared to the chaos going on inside of Jenna right now. On the inside, my man. AM radio and a couple hundred people watching on YouTube. Man, what if you F up? Wow. Uh, you must be freaking out. God, I'm freaking out. How you know what, you I, you know what I'm freaking out about? What? What? I am so happy that you guys are here. Yeah, I, I am freaking out yeah. that, that we're doing this Butter again. Yeah. Summer tour, AM570 in the house. Oh, Jenna's a hype and, man. And let me, tell you, let me tell you guys. Yeah, tell us. Uh, lies, fun, lies. fun fact, okay? Hold on. Well, it's fun, fun fact. fact it's the hour, hour three. three. You guys fun have fact. the best fans ever. Oh, That's right. Ever. That is a fact. Ever. Not open for debate. Mm -hmm. Every no, time never. I do one of these events and I don't get shanked, I feel great. <laughs> I feel like, wow, these are great fans. Nobody stuck a shiv in my giant love handle, and I could not be more appreciative. 
There's a lot of new flavors here at Rock and Brews, though. What have you brought to Let's us? Let's talk about it because oh, you know back man. when we first started coming here, they served one thing only at Rock and Brews. They were a one product, kind of like Philippe's, just with the French tip. One product, shepherd's pie. <laughs> That's and it? now the menu is so extensive. <laughs> it's you know, like when that, we first were here, it's shepherd's pie, shepherd's pie, shepherd's pie, cheeseburger, I don't, cheeseburger. I don't cheeseburger. know if I really want mashed potatoes and ground meat. Well, that's all shepherd's we Shepherd's pie, shepherd's pie, shepherd's pie. <laughs> you know, that shepherd's pie was really good. It was. Yes, it was part of the British invasion. <laughs> you know, we have actually expanded now. Amazing. Our menu, our men, our menu alone. Uh, we, uh, we have everything, you guys. We've got, uh, we're known for our pizza, our burgers, our nachos, our sky high, triple decker, filled with cheese and corn and... Cheese and corn and, guac. and all the things. Okay. Yeah, extreme pepperoni pizza. Obviously, our pizza. What makes it extreme? Oh man, are you ready for what this? What makes yes. it extreme? They throw it out of a plane. People, <laughs> 34, 34 slices of spicy pepperoni. Yeah, is that 34. right? Thirty-four. Swear to God. What yeah. if they only cut thirty-three? Fired. They're fired. Yeah, yeah. 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 You're yeah. You can't yeah. get trained like that. Oh, train yeah. oh, does someone have yeah. to put together bags of thirty-four pieces of pepperoni? They can then just dump on Absolutely. when the order comes it's, in. Okay. It's magical once you see it. Well, and the large one has got fifty-four. Fifty-four. Heck yeah. How about that? <laughs> Come on now. Mm -hmm. Kidding yeah. me? Now it's not just the food though at Rock and Brews though. It's the no. prices. No, oh. it's also the prices. <laughs> it's also the prices. We like the food, <laughs> and we like the prices. And we like well, the prices. I mean, you Family know, affordable. You know, yeah, but you know the best part. I mean, we're known for our amazing craft beer. There's no doubt about that. Love the craft our beer. Amazing cocktails, which you have in front of you. This is the yeah, new. Yeah, what is this? Why would you do this to us? New. I feel like one of the real housewives of Orange County. What's going on here? As you should. You're just as popular. I look like pig face Vicky Gunvalson over here. <laughs> This is our spicy watermelon margarita, our summer favorite. Am I supposed to eat the watermelon? Oh, or you're, you're supposed to eat and drink everything about it. <laughs> okay. Get in there. I will get, get in there. Tim, this look, is Tim, what? What is Tim's this? Tim's already done. Tim's already done. Tim is a, is a Tim's uh, Tim's drinking is a lot like a soccer mom. Yeah. See, Tim does some real heavy soccer I, mom. I, I gave him, I gave him mine about a minute ago. It's gone. When Tim drinks, he wears a sweatshirt on his uh, person <laughs> and around his waist, like <laughs> a true soccer mom. All right, here we go. I'm going to drink it. It's really good. Try it. Like, it's really good. I didn't want to like it right, because I, sip. you know, I'm a guy, you can see how I present myself, that I don't want to drink with a slice of water wow. in it, but I'm proud of this. Wow. I'm very proud of this yeah? drink, Jenna. I yes. feel like I just drank a, a, a spicy Jolly Rancher. I like it. Yeah, what a moment in my yeah, life. Yeah, heck yeah. That's, Where's yours? What, that's our most popular drink. Well, I gave mine to Tim, and once again, it's well, gone. Well, what the hell? Yeah, I was uh, being trying to be hospitable, as we are here at Rock and Brew. It's a, it's a hospitable place and a great place, Jen, and we sure appreciate you. Is there anything else popping off at Rock and Brews here oh, at Guayna Park or anything else we need to know about? You know, I got to tell you guys some exciting news. So we just Please. opened up our first ever Rock and Brews casino hold in on Oklahoma. Hold on one second. Hold on. One, hold on hold what? On. Just hold on. Oh, this, like, the, the way radio works We have works a friend is, that lives in Kansas. Oh, you Rock and Brews something. Casino in Oklahoma? You need to build up. All right, Boomer. ready? Let's try this again. Ready? Okay. There we go. Say, I've got some very big Man, news. Man, there is some big news <sighs> happening well, here. Well, let's hear about it, Jenna. Jenna, why don't you tell yeah, us what, what's going on? Two things. Okay. We've got one, Rock and Brews Casino. <laughs> cha -ching, cha -ching. <laughs> oh, my God. A Rock and Brews Casino. Oh, God. And are you ready for the second? This is the big one, guys. This is the big one. See, this is where you let the drum, let it draw out. Really build it okay. up. Okay. Build it up. Yeah. Like those 34 pieces of pepperoni. Let it sit in there like that watermelon slice. Yeah, exactly. 56 if you order the big it? one. It's your call. Second thing. It's your call. And the second thing is everybody, we are going on to the Las Vegas Strip Whoa. next year, oh my 2023, God. everybody. But, but not a hotel, right? No, no, no. Because I heard the hotel, you have to spoon Gene Simmons. <laughs> Well, you know, those are those are our wonderful celebrity partners. Oh, we love Paul them. Stanley and Gene oh, Simmons from the Paul. band Kiss. Been on the show many times. Oh yeah, we, we love, love them. them. We love mm. them, absolutely. So a casino, huh? A casino. A We're casino. so excited. You guys got to see this thing. I mean, it is incredible. Lined wall to wall, beautiful rock and roll artwork. Okay. All the games. I mean, neon signs, you rock and roll music. You got pie gal? Oh come on. Come we love pie gal. We love pushing. On. We just love yeah. sitting there the drinking all these watermelon spicy marks and not losing anything. Just the, push. The Hard Rock push. Casino in uh, Vegas died so the Rock and Brews Casino exactly in Oklahoma right. could live. We're exactly living. Right. We're about to live it. One We're about went to live down it and one rose. With up. everybody here. Fabulous. Well, yeah. that's great news, Jenna. We're excited. Thank you so much. And we love being partnered with Rock and Brews. We enjoy coming here and doing the Chevy Summer. We're, ha we're so happy to have you guys back. Thank you, everybody, for coming and visiting us. Uh, we're going, we have 20 locations. We're moving and grooving. Growth is incredible right now. We're happy to have you. Jenna from Rock and Brews. And she's got to train people, P. Go train. <laughs> she, she's the, the head trainer here. 
You screw up, out. See you later. <laughs> just like just like that guy that put 33 pieces of pepperoni. Exactly right. He's rip, outro. One, I'll two, rip the three, mask four, right off your face <laughs> like Tommy Tuberville ripped that guy's headphones off. Right wow, outside. I got 35. <laughs> Zach, I get fired too. <laughs> yeah, he's gone. All right, uh, boom. <laughs> out of here. Jenny, you're the best. Thank Do you. Do you not know how to count? I mean, what is your problem? Do you understand how much more that one piece of pepperoni is setting us back? I think I ate it. Bob? Did you? Yeah. All right, it's time, Matt. What's that for? Oh, man, I got a stupid wig. It's f- See, it's terrible. Man. Like, it's a horrible feeling. It's time. Thank you, Jenna. For the word of the day. He heard me with his words. The word of the day. Today's word of the day is triumph. Seven days, Matt. After our triumph at the San Pedro Elks Club, we are rapid fire Chevy summer tour for you. We've arrived at our fully armed Great Sports Talk battery. Great Sports Talk. Here in Buena Park. Here in this town that Walter not built. Knott's That's Berry true. Farm right down the street. Who's going tonight? Who wants to eat a funnel cake after the hot pizza? Let's go. Come on. Let's meet on the accelerator and freak out. Thank you for being a friend and for coming. But I just want to say this. Next week is a little bit of a light week in Great Sports Talk. And some people might be saying, aloha. Great sports talk. Aloha. Some people might be spending 50 bucks a head at a very cheesy white guy luau. (laughs) What if I bring six people? Go up there, sweetie. Learn to hula. (laughs) But we are, uh, next week is going to be a little bit of a light week. And we're not going to do another PMS Chevy summer tour stop until uh, July. So think about last week. If you were in San Pedro, God bless you. If not, we understand. Uh, this is quite a distance. But the Big Elk Show had Mike Watt, Jim Lindbergh. Monday, Matt, you hit the Panic Brothers button and called for the bunt against the shift. Only to be rebutted on Tuesday when we talked to Oral and Gooby. He made a fool of me once again. About their Yakuza history in Japan in 1988 and the trail of blood and <laughs> severed fingers. That they left. They barely got out alive. In Tokyo and Hokkaido. Uh, Bill Plaschke came on. It was an epic Chevy Sweet Night. Steve Garvey was with us. We have jo- Dodgers Giants tickets to give away. Have we even been doing that? Or so enamored with the band? I mean, we've been so enamored with the band. Wednesday, Matt, you weren't here. Uh, you were you were staying at a cheap hotel, keeping children up. Bunch but, of cheap people. <laughs> <laughs> cheap plane. Cheap plane. Wednesday, we talked to James Worthy about cornbread, and we even did Only Kate's Cares and the elusive Before the Show podcast. Tuesday, uh, we had uh, Gooby and Oral on. Thursday, yesterday, we explored Beat Takashi movies and Jen Connolly's breast reduction, Eric Karros, and the Mad Dog. And China! He, he said China... No less than five times on the so show. Excited. You should have seen us off mic. We had to turn our mics off, and we were just <laughs> we, China. T- we talked NBA and NFL opulence, and we got the Mad Dog to reference China five times. <laughs> and we got him to say every day of the week. Monday, Monday Tuesday, Thursday, Thursday, Thursday uh, Saturday, Saturday, Wednesday, Sunday. And even at that moment, we had not reached the peak of the week. We didn't. Until today, Matt, with accidental tendencies. I mean, there is absolutely no great sports talk substitute. Great sports talk. For the Chevy Summer Tour. And there's no separation here, Matt, between the bourgeois and the proletariat like we had at the Elks Club. We're all together. As you like to say, P, it's like that belt. That belt from that the belt. 90s, that interwoven belt. That leather belt that and just the, the, fits together. My favorite part about it all is that here in Orange County, we don't have COVID. So you're here, and you don't have to worry about COVID because they're right when you cross, once you cross that bridge. What's all the citrus? It's yeah, all the citrus. It kills it. Yeah, it's all the orange parts. The acidic, yes. the citrus kills exactly. it. Exactly. You got all the trees. You got the orange groves, and there's something about, uh, and it's a navel orange. That's the best part it's for me. It's the navel orange. It's the uh, the cara cara. You know, you just get a cara cara, whatever the hell you call I it. I exhale yes. when I cross the border because I know that I'm not going to get COVID. Listen, they not pull, here in Orange County. They pull that orange curtain open. It's just, oh. It's amazing. It's and incredible, just, right? Nothing makes me more happy. 
All right, Matt, the number of the day. Where's my number? Uh, 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 uh. Number of the day. Number of the day, P. Uh, you did the, the fun fact earlier. The number of the day is three. I figured I would have a rock and roll themed number of the day because of all the rock music and jenna was talking about all the beautiful rock posters and the guitars oh, about that casino, and the man. memorabilia and the casino you're gonna and, lose all your money right in front of iggy pop's thong i mean look at this what am i looking at right now i got the the pink floyd dark side of the moon cornhole set next to that oh i was peeing on the blimp from led zeppelin right, right in the bathroom yeah, peeing, peeing all, all over, over it man Shoot, Keith Moon named Led Zeppelin, for God's sakes. I see that boombox cassette style right up there with a cornhole set. Rock and roll is damn exciting. Did you know? I know it's only rock and roll. But I like it. Neil Young was Crosby, Stills, and Nash's third choice. Well, he is kind of a weirdo. They approached George Harrison. Sounds like a bitch. He was like, eh. And then after that, just to humiliate him. George Harrison wasn't into it? He was like, hey, come on doing that then they approach clapton well he had his other things going on harrison's like really yeah, he sleeps with my wife and now you're gonna put him in the band just because i say no that's how you're gonna treat me and then clapton said no and then finally the third time they went to the canadian they were like ah, what do you think neil he's like i'll do it and I'll, that's how crosby still i'll do it <laughs> oh man there is a town <laughs> so uh that is how crosby stills nash and young came to be it would have been crosby stills nash and harrison csnh it's kind of a weird deal. It's getting to the point. Oh, uh, no. Ronnie! <laughs> this is the song of the day. <laughs> Strange Brew is our song of the day from an artist called Bernie Marsden. Because the Petros and Money Show is brewing up a live remote broadcast from the Rock and Brews in the city of Buena Park. Site of stop number two on the Petros and Money Chevy Summer Tour, where great sports talk is well underway with your chance to qualify to win that brand new Chevrolet. So go sign up while you're at it. And we've got Dodger baseball back in action with the Cleveland Guardians in town for the weekend. And Tim Cates will get things going for you with your Morongo Casino Dodgers on Deck program from the Rock and Brews live at 7 o'clock. Thank you, Ronnie. Appreciate it. Ronnie with your song of the day. Uh, if you want to check out the band, if you want to check out the broadcast with a visual component, you can do so at youtube.com slash am570la sports or the Facebook page for am570la sports. Links to that available at am570la sports.com. We are in the home stretch. We want you. We want you to uh, follow uh, Accidental Tendencies on Instagram. Yes, at Accidental Tendencies. Before we forget. At Accidental Tendencies on Instagram. Exactly right. Thank you, Pete. Uh, we'll be back. Accidental Tendencies will be playing on that YouTube channel uh, if you want to check it out here in the break. But I Ronnie's follow them on Instagram. Song of the Day. You like their posts. You like their oh, stories. I, I like the, the prices. You, <laughs> and the you love the food. Uh, and a big thank you to Jenna. From Rock and Bruce and all this delicious food, including the extreme. She was pizza. ready to talk. I don't know she what really she was, was worried she about. Freaking out at all. Man, she was better than Leah Remini. <laughs> Barely. Celebrating a birthday this week. <laughs> all right, we'll be back. Clear. All right, guys, we're looking at time. Rock and roll haiku fans are feeling you. Number one, thank you for watching the haikus on YouTube and Facebook and the Petros and Money Chevy Summer Tour in full effect. You want the haiku? You want some rock and roll? You got it. Coming up next. <laughs> yeah. Make way for the first ever Chevy Silverado CR2. With Multimatic shocks, rugged 33 inch tires, and front and rear electronic locking differentials. Dude, this is awesome, but we should get back to work. It's good? Perfect. If you're gonna work remote, work remote. Find new workspaces, find new roads. Chevrolet. Now! Enter to win the Chevy Silverado. You can do it online right here. Check it out. From a secret off-site location, possibly in the Far East, possibly in Whittier, 
This is Vic the Brick Jacobs on the Petros and Money Chevy Summer, Summer Tour. Tour. Oh yeah! Rock and roll haiku for you! Are you ready to rock? This is homage to one of the great rock bands of all time in space. They emanated, born in Brooklyn, New York. They saw all the bands, they saw the Stones, they saw the Beatles, they saw the Who, and they said, we gotta fill a void. We gotta put some paint on, and we gotta do some pyrotechnics, and just rock. Like it's our last show every night on stage, I'm talking KISS. I wanna rock and roll all night. And take it to the streets. I wanna rock and roll all night. And party every day. Yeah, 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 yeah. KISS. I'm feeling you. This is Body Armor Edge. All right, of caffeine and a thousand milligrams of electrolytes it's more than a sports drink it's body armor edge if you're listening to the show on the iheart radio app there is now this sweet new feature you hit that button you can interact with us live in the moment during the stream we love that you podcast and have made the iheart radio up the number one podcast platform in all the land and we appreciate you procuring our podcast there but moving forward hit that button interact with us this is petros and money is Petros and Money.
This is Petros and Money. Petros and Money, AM yeah. 570 LA Sports, live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app, able to get out there with the people. And that last commercial break as Accidental Tendencies was playing. Uh, a grin and grip. We love seeing all of you. Thank you so much for coming out. We certainly appreciate it. Uh, appreciate all of you for all of these summer tour stops. We had a great one last week at the Elks Club in San Pedro, and this one has been exceptional as well, gave away a pair of Dodger tickets. I don't know if that guy's a Dodger fan at all. He's wearing his Justin Turner. Check out the pine tar on the back of yeah. my jersey. Free jersey giveaway that just won those Dodgers-Giants tickets. I know but, he's a Raider fan, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. The Raiders Raider. with the lanyard and said he will be at week one at SoFi Stadium. Already counting the days. Wonderful people. There's a UCLA Hall of Famer, a softball player back there. She rubbed it in my face and said she's in the UCLA Hall of Fame. And Is I'm that right? She said, you're never going to make it into the USC Hall of Fame, you loser. Uh, and then there's wonderful families here. It's just a beautiful event, Matt, and we're really pleased that everybody came out, especially your daughter's band, Accidental Tendencies. They've been the jewel and the gem of the PMS Chevy Summer Tour today. But also a big thank you to Ricky, Bobby, who is uh, on the video. And, uh, and Ricky was stressed. Ricky and Matt were super stressed earlier. Were you guys? Our man Wacko is down. There were some power issues. There were some, I mean, they're trying to run a four-camera shoot. This is, come on, this is not what they were hired to do. And now all of a sudden they're supposed to be cinematographers and then directors and producers, all the while drinking delicious Modellos with, with limes in them. Come on. It's I mean, been, they, you know, you get pressed been, into duty. Yeah, they, they've uh, they've really done a great job they with the stream up. on YouTube. The train has been great. We love the train. I like that vibe. Uh, Tim Cates, our executive producer, of course, he's produced a lot of shows. All CIF Baseball in 96. Dave Weiss, yeah. who is our promotions man. He's been working his ass off all day, putting umbrellas around so people don't burn. Dave Weiss, who is in charge of all this. Tim from KISS FM, a wonderful man who is also a vice president and helps about Miles and all of our people Drew. in promotions. Drew and Bert, our steak-faced engineer, ancient Bert. Still alive. As still old, round of applause for Bert for still being alive. As old as the Incan people. Bert. Yeah, way to be alive, Bert. We love you. How many look, meals today, Bert? Look alive, Bert. Five. Five meals in. Get some of those nachos that Jenna left for us. P, you've been, uh, you've been curating the secret text I mean, live kinda, over these two and a half hours. I know it's tough because obviously mean, it's been you're, so much. you're with the people. Uh, what do we got going? Has no gallbladder, Cates. See, because Tim Cates has no – you're looking at a man who is not complete. He is missing his gallbladder. And That's that true. is because – not because of C4 energy – Ignite your fire, because that would never happen. It's because of Rockstar. Rockstar two a day. took Tim Cates' two a gallbladder. Day. Crushed his gallbladder. And now he drinks spicy. Allegedly. He assaults his gallbladder's uh, absence with spicy margaritas on his esophagus all day long. Is he drinking yours? Yes. And this one says, no gallbladder Cates has he ever consumed a glass of water. And the answer is, I've never seen it. Not much. Not Kate's response to that is there's water and ice that's in this spicy mark. <laughs> that counts. That is couple, true. It hydrates your, a couple ounces. It hydrates your drink. Uh, this text says, I was one of those cheap people on the Honolulu trip. Vic was awesome. And he sent a picture of the Honolulu trip. Speaking of which, Vic has sent us a text. Yeah, I saw that. Loving the tour stop. Preston in the band. Sensational. Boy Next Door is a hit. Yeah. Thank Boy Next Door was the original we got. That, that was, was the original we played on the air, yeah. That was pretty good. With all this Rock and Bruce expansion, can you suggest that they reopen the Downey location, please? Pada La Rasa. Ooh, we loved it. That's where we met DJ and uh, Coach Negro. Remember, they came over for that one. That was a beautiful location. As if we don't hate Matt enough already. What? He has to shove his super talented daughter's band down our throats. <laughs> 
No, but seriously, they're I'm trying to lay out. They're they're fantastic, and you guys as well. I definitely uh, agree with that. Uh, Thank you, sir. Oh, and I want to say this: uh, Solo Sports, I believe, is not here. Price hooker not here. The price hooker is not here. But the Solo Sports tequila that he gave us, it's good. It's really good. The Solo Zorro. Yeah. Uh, Solo Razo. Solanzaro or something. Yeah, that that's a. That's a fine tequila. It is. There's no doubt it about really that. It really is. It's a really good tequila. I didn't want to like it. I wanted it to be like, you know, rusty nails at the bottom of, of a cap of water. Instead, it's delicious. So I believe we are going to go to break with, with not with, an ode to some of the celebrity owners here well, at they, Rock and Brew. Yeah, Preston had the idea um, to... Is she going to do Turn On The Night? Well, can my you, favorite Kiss song? She is not. The one that you told me sucked and try to, <laughs> and then you try to discount my childhood and the things I like? No. Just because they weren't wearing makeup in the song? You're so... Uh, Lick it up. I mean, there are many. There are many... Not well, as good as Turn On The Night. What do you have, Preston? What do we got here? Uh, all right. So um, I want to give a, th- a special thank you to Rock and Brews for having us. Yeah. All right, Rock and Brews. And Jenna. And Jenna. And I'm sure that you all know that Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons are part owners. Yeah, so let's go kiss. Right. So we got to do a kiss song. And since it's Frogman Friday. Turn on the night. Frogman. We got to do a, we got to do Hard Luck Woman. Oh. Frogman. So, um, so close. We've all heard it on the show. And so sing along with me. And when I come in with the, you know, the, you know the line, like, Rag the sailor's only daughter. I'm going to need you guys to sing that with me because I can't do it alone. Um, so everybody pull out your phones. My bad. Get the lyrics. So then you don't mess it up. All right. Uh, let's do this. If never I met you, I never had seen you cry. For a first hello, we never have to say goodbye. If never I held you, my feelings would never show. It's time I start walking, but there's so much you'll never know. Keep telling you hard luck, son. You ain't a hard luck woman. Sailor's only daughter, child of the water, how to be a queen. Yeah. I really love you, I can't. 
Three James Accident Attorneys, we help hundreds of clients get the medical care they need and recover millions of dollars each and every month. If you or someone you love has ever heard an accident, call us for a free consultation. You won't pay a dime until we know. Let Sweet James be by your side to turn your setback into your company. This is Petros and Money. This is Petros and Money. Chef at Dodger Stadium. And one thing I love is watching all the fans go to the taqueria to get Chef Morito's carne asada nacho helmet. And now I'm going to show you how to take it from Dodger Stadium to your home. One hey, last Dodger segment fans, we're going to make this fan favorite using Chef Morito's carne asada Number two of the Petros and Morito's Money Chevy Summer Touring. Huge thank you. Dodgers. To Let's all get started. of our Preferably partners, you want to Chevrolet, the meat for 20 to 30 as you can register, really there's still a little bit of time left. I like our man to marinate Joe mine overnight and just make it uh, even that much better. Under the so umbrella, you set your grill to he will beef, sign you up before it's too late. You could be our second finalist. A big thank you to Joe. Huge thank you to Joe. He just hangs at that table the entire broadcast and signs you up for an opportunity to win a Chevrolet Silverado. A huge thank you to Body Armor. So first we want to take the tortilla So excited to have them aboard. It's more than a sports drink. We do need to rehydrate. You can either use rehydrate. That's why Kate. Doesn't drink any, any water, kind of just drinks a bunch of body like. armor. Tropical chaos. Beans, Sweet James Accident your Attorneys. Favorite nacho cheese. You're gonna accident call you as much nacho cheese as you like. We like and a C4 lot energy here drinks. at Dodger Stadium. Then we're gonna take our. And that's what we're Chef doing Marito today. Thank you to our band, Accidental right Tendencies. All of you that showed up. Tim Cates will be here doing Morongo Casino Dodgers on deck, starting right at six o'clock. Let's do the dead guy really quick. We don't often get to these at these events. It's Jamaican noon. Seasoning with a citrus spicy blend is great for any drink rim or fruit. Aubrey Adams, 102 years old today. Careful when you look this guy up because there's a porn star with the same name. Dodgers baseball is on the air and on your phone. Stream all the games on the iHeartRadio app and get all our exclusive Dodger podcasts. Today with accidental tendencies, I didn't even notice. Aubrey was a keyboard player and a band leader, one of the tops in the 50s in Jamaica. Aubrey was the inspiration to somebody we celebrated earlier in the month, uh, Monty Alexander the great Jamaican jazz pianist. He played in the most influential band in Jamaican history, the Sonny Bradshaw Band. Bradshaw's the guy that built the radio, that got the radio signals from Cuba and Florida and basically created Jamaican music. Okay, seems the, important. He was a horn player. 
He played ska with all the Giants, Pat Kelly, Bradshaw, Ronnie's favorite, tromboner, Roland Alfonso. I do appreciate him. Most of his stuff was released on the Cox and Dodd label. Like his biggest hit, Margie, with his band, The Dewdroppers. Aubrey died at 70 in 1990. Keyboard Jamaican legend, Aubrey Adams. Matt, you got the... Uh, I have the Alive Guy, Ronnie. My great apologies. I forgot to send you a song to play as an accompaniment. Well, we rarely get to it, Matt. We do. Um, but if you could pull up Mandy, that would be fantastic. Oh, Manilo. Manilo, happy birthday, by the way, to my mother, Antoinette. She is watching on the YouTube feed right now. You got so, your mother-in-law uh, here? I got my mother-in-law, Mimi, here. Uh, but happy birthday to my mother, yeah, Antoinette, Antoinette, back in uh, Hammond, Indiana. She uh, is watching. So Tough happy place birthday, to get Mom. into from the other side of the state. You ain't kidding Big curbs there. Uh, Eight inches. Happy 79th <laughs> to Barry Allen Pincus. It pains me to say this. Thank you, Ronnie. It truly pains me to say this. It is my wife's favorite artist. Manilo? Manilo. She is a fanalo for Manilo. Even though the guy from Air Supply is right next to us in the suite, it's yes, still Manilo? It's still Manilo. It hurts. Born in the big town, Brooklyn. Uh... <laughs> Big Brain, College of New York, New York College of Music, studied at Juilliard, and did a score for an off-Broadway musical, The Drunkard, that had an eight-year run. Sounds like a production we could maybe have a role in. <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, made his mark as a jingle writer. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there, Manilow. I thought Brad Paisley wrote that. I was stuck on Band-Aid because Band-Aid stuck on me, Manilow. You deserve a break today, McDonald's, Manilo. All of those. Uh, but working as a TV music coordinator, uh, Tony Orlando signed him to CBS. Bette Midler saw him, loved him. He became her producer for her, her first two records. Clive Davis met him when he started Arista. He signed Manilo, and uh, he had all those hits. Mandy, Can't Smile Without You, Looks Like We Made It. All of it. Um, Copacabana from the movie Foul Play was a number one song. He played the Greek. HBO put it on live, and it was one of the first times a cable show had actually outrated a network television show. Because so, of Manilow. Because uh, of Manilow. So, happy birthday. He was married to his high school sweetheart, annulled after a year. What was his name? Uh, it was her name. But he's been with his man, Gary, since 1970. That's odd. Gary go. was his real high school sweetheart. Uh, Gary had the key to my heart. Happy 79th, Barry Manilow. City of Hope. That's City Hope is a world-renowned research and treatment center for cancer, diabetes, and other life-threatening diseases. Dodgers versus the Guardians. They swept the Angels. They're 39-23. Half game back of the Padres. Yes, the Dodgers are in second place. Guardians have won four in a row, eight of their last ten, and they're only two back of the Twins in the Central. It's Kershaw versus Plesak. Plesak! And Kate's going to have all that great Dodger intel in Dodgers on deck coming ten up seconds. next. All right. Thank you, Rock and Bruce. Thank you, all of you. Stick around, because Accidental Tennessee is going to do one more before Kate comes along to do Dodgers on deck. I heard Manilo and Bette Midler did it. I heard that too. Clear. When you want Dodgers.
This is Petros and Money.